Hello and welcome back to the Flurry Sports Podcast. My name is Zach Bruner and with me, as always, is Jake Osman. How's it going, Jake? Oh, Zach, we are doing so good. What a sports weekend. Pretty good Final Four and, of course, WrestleMania. Zach, you are listening to the Flurry Sports Podcast. Surprisingly, still good, like Stone Cold's neck. Who would have thought? <laughs> it's been 19 years and that thing didn't break. So we're good. I think there was times I was worried in the match last night. Oh, for sure. And we don't need to go into WrestleMania now. But also, before anything happened, Stone Cold obviously was going up on the ropes or whatever, signaling to the crowd. And his knee brace, I thought, was breaking. Like, it just became unstrapped and he couldn't strap it, so he tucked it in, it looked like. But I thought his knee brace was breaking. Like, oh, no, he's going to have to fight with, like, one knee brace on. He's going to be down for the count. Oh, no. You can't break him any more than he's already been broken. Um, but we're here, Zach. WrestleMania so far, as we record, night one in the books. Good. Uh, NCAA Final Four, uh, I think, went the way we hoped it would, technically, in predictions. Kind of. Like, if if UNC was going to win, which was the most dramatic option, I'm glad it's them versus Kansas and not them versus Villanova. Honestly, I thought the Duke versus North Carolina matchup was going to rival WrestleMania with the most suplexes via Roy Williams. I thought he was going to uh, tear down. Uh, <laughs> he's just going to full belly-to-belly suplex Coach K on the floor, I thought. Uh, they flashed to him, Jake. You didn't watch it. I'm not kidding. They showed him more than North Carolina's coach. No one knows who that guy is. No one no one knows uh North Carolina's head coach's name. Poor guy. Hubie. Hubie. Hubert something. Yeah. Um, I keep calling him Hubie Brown, and it's not Hubie Brown. It's no. Hubie Williams. I, son Will. of Roy. <laughs> That's right. They look so much alike. It's actually <laughs> kind of crazy. But they kept flashing to him. Roy was in a mask. So I'm like, he was definitely like saying something. Like he was, yeah. all the profanities at Coach K. They had the camera on him all the time. And then at the end, after North Carolina won, he took the mask off because obviously, like now Terms is the are time. Gone now, yeah, yeah. Now is the time. Coach K is off the floor. He was fist bumping, screaming something, and it was great. And like we talked about last week, now it's the matchup between his two former teams. So now we don't know who Roy Williams is going to sport. Uh, he's probably yeah. going to be North Carolina with a t- Kansas shirt underneath that he can casually take off at halftime after they're losing. I'm a little confused on who's on our good guy, bad guy dynamics here just because I really yeah. thought – I'm on record of saying that UNC beating Coach K twice on the way out is like all-time heel moves. I don't know. <laughs> they might be the good guys. I still – like I when they, they went out, I'm like, they did it. They put him down um, once and for all. Um, so how many times we got to teach you this lesson, old man? To go- <laughs> <laughs> Stay down. down. <laughs> um, and also, am I rooting for Kansas now? No way. Like UNC has no. got to continue to put down blue bloods. That's right. Uh, it, it, the the small guys, the, yeah, the, the David in this Goliath matchup, it's definitely UNC. They were talking about like UNC did it against all odds. I'm like, come on, man. They have like, 25 star guys on their team. What are you I would about? love, I want UNC to get t shirts that say blue blood killers, even yeah. though they're the school Michael Jordan went to. I, I want them to like embrace, like, we are the giant slayers. They were treating them like they're a Cinderella because they're the eight or the nine seed, whatever. Like, stop it. Like, no one thought they were the Cinderella ever. No. They beat, <laughs> yeah, they beat them. Uh, they beat Baylor. They they've not they just lost early in the year and then people got healthy and they dunked on everyone. So stupid. Yeah, so stupid. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I kind of predicted this last week. I'm not super excited about the championship game. I like we said the invert the inversion of excitement for NCAA basketball March Madness and like I don't, I was way more excited for the Duke North Carolina game. Oh yeah, I won't watch the championship game. I have no no need. No, and it's just like, I mean, if if I hear that it's a really good game, I'll keep tabs on it, you know, and I'll turn it over if it's good. Um, 
But also, if you want like a prediction prediction, I don't think it's, it's – I want it to be close in a good game. I think Kansas is going to stop her. Probably. Again, don't know, don't care. Like I think <laughs> North Carolina might be more talented, but Maybe. they have Brady Manic. They got the tall white guy who screams close but no cigar. He screams like, I am the greatest college player of all time, but no, I will never win anything. You mean so he I feel like screams Drew Timmy. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes, his correct. vibes from Gonzaga. Yes, that is 100% correct. So I would assume North Carolina loses because of him and him alone. Yeah. And Kansas, meanwhile, yeah, man, I don't know. Screw Kansas. <laughs> that's, all, that's my analysis of Kansas. They're done. Screw them. Go Cats, baby. I've always I've been ahead of the hating the Jayhawks trend. You know, trailblazer. That's yeah, trendsetter. And when people are starting to hate on Iowa, they also look to you. You've been here That's all right. along, uh, kicking, <laughs> stopping corn, uh, doing your thing. Stopping um, corn. That's right. But Jake, we it's kind of feeling drafting here a little early today. Ooh. Ooh. Jake's looking around frantically. Oh, dude, I just <laughs> heaved a Kleenex box. All right, that's fine. Okay. Jake's got his hat on because he's feeling drafty. We're going to do our draft off the top, uh, not sports-related. Jake, would you like to explain the topic of our draft today? I would. And first of all, shout-out to longtime listener Hannah Bruner, who revealed to me this weekend that she fast-forwards through the podcast for the fun stuff. So this, this, this one's for you. For you. That's right. Sorry, you if missed you, it. You fast forwarded too far, Hannah. That's right. And if you listen. agree with Hannah, uh, you can let her know uh, via letter at the Elk Mountain School District. But our mm-hmm. draft section, Zach, uh, this season we're getting a little drafty. So we are going to be drafting things snake draft style. So this time Zach's going to go first and we are going to go back and forth. So Zach gets first pick. I get second and third. Then he gets fourth and fifth and so on until we each have. Do we want to go three or five deep this time, Zach? I think five. I think it's easier to do five. I think we can do it. Because we are doing the, oh yeah, song draft. Which means songs that when you hear them, uh, you go, oh yeah, totally forgot about that one. Or just, I think it needs to surprise you no matter when you hear it. That's correct. Yeah, it's songs is, that everyone knows, everyone loves. Yes. But I don't think about them. Yes. And like, to me, this screams... I mostly went with songs that were overplayed and then disappeared. Yeah. Um, I will also say hard, hard draft to research because you have to research things you forgot about. <laughs> That's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. So I kept looking uh, for songs think... where it was like just on the edge of my memory. Right. Yeah. <laughs> about the border here. I was telling Jake beforehand, like, this is tough for me. I have like 30 songs here. I kind of went through my Spotify playlist. So songs that I listen to, but because I feel like I, for whatever reason, I'm the contrarian. Like, oh, you forgot about so- that song? Not me. I've been listening to it every day for the past three years. So a lot of these songs, I'm just trying to read everybody else, I think. But to your point, a lot of them are going to be songs that were overplayed, you forgot about. There's some on here I have, like, big-name artists. And I'm like, you just don't think of that song as their top song anymore. So there's some of them like, oh, yeah, I forgot that Taylor Swift saying this. It's not Taylor Swift. I have no Taylor Swift. But to your point, <laughs> yes. But for my first song, Jake, since I am drafting first, I'm going to try to hit a few different timelines here. I'm going to play to yes. everybody. But the first one I'm going to go with is I'm going to go with Smooth by Santana and uh, Rob Thomas. You know this song? That is good. That is good. Anything by Matchbox 20 is a really good yes. pick. Just uh, like and- the Yoshin under the moon for the people who don't <laughs> <laughs> You got a lot of love in there. It is true. Give me your heart and make it real. I'll just oh, forget, forget about, about it. it. So yes, good. So, so good. Santana's silky guitar. It's a really Ooh, good pick. Absolutely. Set. For my back to pack, 
my back to pack. Oh, whoa. Ooh. Um, <laughs> my back to back. I'm going old school and new school. Old school first sec. A real yeah. throwback here because I tried to grab an 80s song that I don't think shows up on a lot of 80s playlists, but everyone goes, oh, yeah, that one. I'm going to go with Mr. Roboto by <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's a Tomo Arigato. I just think every time it comes on, people are like, oh, shit. Yeah, this one. I, I think people forget how words. it starts, too. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Weird <laughs> right, is the yeah. answer to that. Um, and part two, Zach, I made a, uh, a change on this right beforehand because I wanted to go something by um, LMFAO. Um, yeah. but I'm going to go with one that I forgot about. And then it came back to me. So I'm going to go with sexy and I know it. Very good. Yeah. Uh, to your point, everywhere for like a few months and then yes. never seen again or heard Gone. of again. And I feel like party rock anthem holds like a little nostalgia place in some people's hearts. I, I think sexy and I know it did it. I think everyone was like, why, why are we all listening yeah. to this one? Yeah. This is yeah, it's just the extended cut essentially. That's very good. I'm gonna take a song from the same uh point in time, I think. And uh this one, I was just looking through songs from the early 2000s, and this surprised me. Like, I'm like, oh my god, this just unlocked a part of my brain that was early high school homecoming dances. I'm like, oh no, what's going on? I'm like panicking. Good girls go bad. By Cobra Starship. Oh, Cobra Starship. I forgot right. about Cobra Starship. My finishing move if I was in WWE would be called <laughs> Cobra Starship. Yes. Uh, I think that was Jake the Snake's finisher, actually. Yeah, that's right. His top rope move. But yeah, that was high school homecoming written all over it. I'm like, oh no, what is this song? Uh, so that's that one. I will go... Mm. This is a song that just confuses me, and I'm always surprised to hear it, but I'm not sure if everyone else is, but I'm going to do it anyways. It's from the 60s, which blows my mind. Okay. It, I I disagree with that, by the way. I disagree that, that it was released. In, yes. I disagree. TikTok by Kesha. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Pinball Wizard by The Who. Oh. That is not a 60s song. It's not, I, I mean, it's very 70s. Right. I would I would have guessed late 70s, early 80s. I would have guessed during the time when like Keith Moon died and they weren't a band anymore. Like that's I feel yeah. like I feel like we're gonna we're gonna talk about conspiracy here. I think they went back in time. They brought a song and Keith Moon got left there. And then they came back with like, oh, Keith Moon died. Like he's not <laughs> with us anymore. But really, he was back in the 60s drumming away at pinball wizard making fun of the deaf dumb and blind kid who sure plays a mean pinball jake that is weird it was for the only reason i knew it was at least early 70s is because it's from like a elton john movie right yeah he did that but yeah 69 i'm like i've thought about that a lot by the way I'm like six there's no way like this this was being Since played the same time the beatles like, yeah there's no way See, that's a good one because because of the length of it and because it tells a really weird story. I don't think it's one people like play it's on playlists and stuff. But it is yeah. fun. The first minute is a hoot. Everyone We're talking yet. about is, this du deaf, dumb, and blind kid is really good at pinball and he has supple wrists. <laughs> like, he's so good at it. Like, I what, think you what makes him so good? Such a supple wrist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so good. All right, Zach, but that is, back. it's Go one ahead. of my, the funniest songs of all time, in my opinion. Like, it's not it's outwardly funny, but they were like, oh, <laughs> that you know, they got beat on the high score from this one kid, not deaf, blind, or dumb, yeah. but they're like, a motherfucker. Like, they, we got they got to talk shit on him. It's so funny. That is funny. And they're just drunk off their asses writing it, yeah. too, but it's the who, so it's good. Right. Um, that is great. I, to a point you made, I had a really easy time getting songs from like 2012 to 2014 in my head, like late middle school, uh, high school, like dances were like what was coming to mind. So for my back to back, first I'm going with 
Call Me Maybe by mm. Carly Rae Jepsen. Um, hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. <laughs> that one. Um, I yeah, think that. we're far enough away now that that's an oh yeah song. I was a little on the edge on that one because it was so big, but I think I, I think we're on the edge of it. I think we're on the edge of people going, oh yeah, Carly Rae Jepsen. Even though her next album slaps. I love Carly Rae. Um, Agreed. Shout out to her. Um, <laughs> big yeah. fan of the show, I'm sure. Um, and next, I alluded this to last week, but I still have to pick it. You could pick any song by this band, but I'm going to go with Break Even by The Script. <laughs> that is any you're right though any script song for sure yeah like oh my god they were a band that's insane yeah they're good uh it they're so good they dominated 2013 what, what, <laughs> <laughs> they had one year where it was just like load them for bud yeah. baby everyone's a grand slam homers only right. i almost picked um the man who can't be moved which is awesome oh. If one day yeah. you wake up and realize you're missing me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so good. It's so good. So those are my third and fourth picks. Okay. Now here, here's the dilemma, Jake. Do I play to the audience who I believe is our audience? I'm thinking a lot of Hannah's, a lot of that age range, which is, uh, you know, 40. Just out of college, still in college. That's kind of our main yeah. demographic. I could play to that. The first one I'll do, though, and this is not going to jump off the page as a song everyone knows, but you do know it. It's Song 2 by Blur. Do you know it? I know Blur, but I don't know. I will in a yeah. second, but no. It's a song that goes, woohoo! Oh. And I'm and I'm Beatles, woohoo! Woo Every Madden game, sports game from 2014. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Everyone knows that song. No one knows the song name. Because the song's name is Song 2. Like, no one knows it. No one knows it's by Blur, Yeah, usually. That's the one I'm going to go with. The other one, I'm going to go with... I'm going to play the audience a little bit. I'm going to go with Fly by Sugar Ray. Oh. Again, Sugar Ray's another band. Like, oh my god, yeah. You know Sugar Ray. You love Sugar Ray. Don't call them Sugar Gay. Because if you ever seen that video, <laughs> you will beat the shit out of you. Yes. Uh, this this is the Sugar Ray song that's uh, everywhere I go, statues crumble for me. That one, which yes. is a great line. But every oh. Sugar Ray song also works. Yeah, Sugar Ray McGrath for what I can't believe I can remember his name. Mark McGrath got really famous, and I don't know how that happened. But um, that's good. I'm ending with an '80s one, Zach, and I will say the throwback ones were hard for me to get because I'm not that old. So I'm trying to gauge like what's on the peripheral. But I picked one that's gonna have a nice visual joke to go for because I think you and I are gonna react the same way when I start singing it here. Um, and I think it's one that everyone likes when they think of it. I'm gonna go with a song by the Bangles. I'm gonna go with "Dance Like an Egyptian." That makes fun of police <laughs> at the door to chop. <laughs> so good, so good. Why doesn't? Why don't we all listen to that song all the time? <laughs> That's <good. laughs> why don't we all listen to it? <laughs> you should run for office and just include that in there, please. Why don't we all listen to Walk Like You Did Just? Yeah, it's not a song that makes you go, oh, yeah. It's a song that makes you go, oh, hey, oh, da 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 Yes. <laughs> Very true. Um, my last one. And I'm going to preface this with, I could have gone for this one, but everyone listens to Gautier all the time. And if you don't know Gautier, then figure it I out. I took it off I'm my list, too. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. And by the way, thinking of Gautier made me think of Hosier, Take Me to Church. And I did not include that one as well. <laughs> but the one I am going to go with, I'm going to go back a little bit. It's going to be a little bit older. I'm going to go with No Rain by Blind Melon. I almost put it on there, but we just talked about it on the show. But that is yeah. a great pick. 
Such a good song. Such a good sad song. <laughs> I like to say that my life, my is, life pretty. is pretty plain. Yeah, so good. I like watching the puddles gather rain. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Do you want to know so some good. of the other songs I wrote down? Yes, I have some honorable okay. mentions too. Cool. I just want to see if any of these make you go, oh, yeah. Because, again, I don't know how to gauge this because I listen to all of these songs. Uh, I have Bad Day by Daniel Powder. Eh, it's still in like the front okay. of my brain because of Idol. Okay, how about the same time? And I think of these two people as the same person. Uh, You're Beautiful by James Blunt. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Um, Scotty Doesn't Know, I have. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> B- Big Yellow Taxi by Counting Crows and my girl, Vanessa Carlton. Shout out to you. It would never come up to me, but good song. It's a good song. Two Princes by Spin Doctor. Oh, yeah. Uh, Butterfly by Crazy Town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that one. Uh, I wrote down Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Hey, can a Green Day song be on there? I, I'll give it to you. That's, yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel, I feel like people don't think of that song anymore. But it was massive, obviously. People and don't still think re- of it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, along the same lines, like as a big artist, I have Ride With Me by Nelly. Oh, good. Uh, Shake It by Metro Station. <laughs> and uh, uh, Miley Cyrus's brother. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have My First Kiss by 303 and Kesha. My First Kiss with uh, anything by Kesha. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> uh, Lonely by Akon. Mm. Um. You Get What You Give by The New Radicals. Oh, yeah. Uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. Oh, yeah. The imp- I love the imp- that song. That's, a that's really such good a good one. song. That's the a impression- really good pick. I think that might be the best one on your list so far. These okay, well, honorable mentions. Okay, well, let's pretend I included that one. Um, Bre- oh. I have The Impression That I Get by Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Okay. Uh, the Reason by Huba Stank, which I think <laughs> is still played at every water park every summer. Uh-huh. I would assume. Yeah. Uh, Face Down by Red Gem Suit Apparatus, which is one I listen to like basically every week. And then this one, I honestly have no idea. What is Love by Hathaway? That's the SNL song. The dun, 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 dun. You know? What oh, yeah. I think so. Hathaway? I think so. Even though it's on like, if you buy like a 90s hit CD, it's on there. But I think it's right. good. Um, I only have... Th- three other ones and I might think of some as I go here but I had I didn't put this on here because I didn't know how relevant this was to everybody but what would you have thought if I had included 30 point buck (laughs) I am always surprised to hear it (laughs) every time every time so that was on there um insane in the membrane um Mm. from the night insane in the brain uh I had that on there um uh, I don't want to work. I just want to bang on the drum all day. That's a very good one, too. Yeah. That was the other one I had on there. And also, didn't include it because this one was niche, but I just thought that I, I just thought of this and I had it on my list for a second. What about the 70s show theme song? Oh. Yeah. See, you had the reason. Is that. <laughs> What I That's all, that, that show is popular do. everywhere, right? It's not just to Wisconsin. I thing. think so. Yeah, it was popular everywhere. I mean, it made Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher stars. So right, right. But like, is it still like? Does it have the mainstay as in Wisconsin? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if it has the mainstay. I think the song does. I think the song sure. is just enough to be like. I think when you hear "Hang It Out," I think that That's will true. hook people. Yeah, maybe. That's why I didn't put it on there. I was unsure of that I, as well. I'm sure there's a lot of TV themes that would work. Don't you think? Yes. I thought of some as well. Maybe that's a list for another time. But yes, I thought of those too. Another draft, perhaps, Zach. Ooh. Ooh, it's going to get drafty once again. <laughs> that's right. No, those were all good ones. Um, oh, um, this just came to my brain. Um, I Love You Like a Love Song Baby by Selena Gomez. Oh my goodness. Plain to the audience, Jake. Love me some Selena Gomez. That's a good one. The audience, that's you. We, yeah, I'm the only one here. 
<laughs> that's right. Does that's, anyone listen to this show? That's fair. Just, I also got so close to including anything by Nickelback. Yeah, Nickelback's a weird one. They all, I think they just play the same song over and over for me. So, like, they all sound the same, but they're all, so I don't know how I would. I choose. almost put Rockstar on there, but I'm like, I don't know if people forgot about it or not, but yeah. Also, Bob with the Bob by Kid Rock. It was included in the WWE video yesterday, and I went over was that. I <laughs> that is a good one, actually. Uh, let us know any other ones we possibly missed. Yes. Uh, but, Jake, let's talk sports again. And I told you before the show, uh, I have an NBA stat that's very relevant to our show, and right. I want to talk about it. And I didn't fact check it because I don't know how. But, like, reputable accounts are talking about it. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, Jake, on average, passes the ball to Rudy Gobert only twice per game. Not assists, passes to him twice per game. How do you what's check your, that? Exactly. I don't know how. But what's your thoughts about that? Because we've talked about this relationship a lot. That it's <laughs> not a healthy one. We'll confirm they hate each other. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> Um, so my thoughts on it, right, are that that's unsustainable because I would guess that those two lead their team in minutes. That's not based on anything. I know you can check that, but I, you know, that's, it's I'd close if, you're, if it's not right. Correct, yeah. they're, if they're not, I, I'd guess they're top three for sure on their team. If there's someone else in between them. Um, mm -hmm. so the fact that they only, you know. He only passes to him. And Mitchell's going to hold the ball more than Gobert. Yeah. So yeah. it's like Gobert's passes to Mitchell. I would love if Gobert passes to Mitchell like 15 times a game. It's For like sure a more. Yeah. For sure more but, of that. But just like a one-way relationship. Like he's like, we're all good. Like <laughs> just a bunch if of – If I know anything about Rudy Gobert, he, it's, he's willing to spread it around, you know? So I, I think he's very willing to give it up. Carelessly. That's true. Yes, famously, famously, for sure. famously, gonna, carelessly. for people who don't know the joke we're talking about, it's going to make it sound like he's really promiscuous. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I mean, that's true. Um, did not know how to wrap it before he tapped the microphone. Um, so for sure. Um, but th this is the thing. So Utah Jazz fans and accounts are talking about this, and everyone, everyone that's a Jazz fan, it seems like hates donovan mitchell they're like because he, he hates to them. go he hates them i guess but like one of the jokes that has been going around now is like i would trade donovan mitchell for a dollar because at least we get four quarters out of it what are they talking I'm, about i'm he's their he's team the right what am i missing yeah he's their no, he he is the team yes it's unbelievable get donovan out of there it's un why would you Rudy Gobert has the death of millions on his hands, and you would rather cheer for him. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Am I to wrong? To be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if Donovan Mitchell started those rumors. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell's backstage, like, I'll trade him for anything. A Klondike bar. Um, yeah. a, a firm handshake. Why is he still here? Um, trade him anywhere else. Maybe not Boston. Some. Yeah, yeah, maybe in, uh, Denver or Boston or, you know. That's right. Somewhere where they don't know how to treat black people. <laughs> he's, yeah, without, he's the only reason they have success. He's the only reason. Like, listen, Gobert is good, but Gobert's a novelty act. Centers who like, don't shoot don't win you yeah. ball games in the NBA in 2022. No, no. And especially ones who can't close out on Terrence Mann. <laughs> right that's your test um like if the jazz are going to win their first round series whoever they go against and it's because donovan mitchell is going to average 45 points per game god yeah like this is what he does and they got rid of ingles like what are they man that's funny ingles is probably going to come back they trade he got injured ruled out for the season then they traded him and now he's probably going to come back once he's healthy which is awesome that is funny. That's really funny. That is good. Um, so who do they have there? One of the Bogdanoviches? Yeah. Uh, they got Mike Conley and Jordan Clarkson and then yeah. Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. 
which which, but, which Bogdanovich do they have? Do they have Bogdan Bogdanovich or do they have uh, Bohan. the other one? Bohan, Bohan, Bohan. Bohan or Bogdan? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's not related somehow. It's that pisses me off. By the way, that's not okay. Stop. <laughs> They're it. not related. It's like the first thing that pops up on either of their Wikipedia pages too is not related right. to. Um, that's the only also their interesting first thing names, about that. Their first names are so. That's an SNL skit. My yeah. name is Bogdan Bogdanovich. This is my brother Bohan Bogdanovich. By the way, not right. related. It's not okay. It's not the only, yeah, the only interesting thing about either of them is that they are not related and that's not fine. Like, you get know, yeah, uh, it's unbelievable. That, um, <laughs> not okay. Not okay. It's, I can't wait for the 30 for 30 on the jazz to come out. Um, <laughs> I was going to say the 30 for 30 on the book. Down of it. Just, it's going to, we're going to go Bogdan's, on Maury. On Bogdan's thing, it says he was named after a famous architect, Bogdan Bogdanovich, and there are like seven other Bogdans in his family. It's like a family name. Okay, it's like it's like George, which is Foreman. even better. I they're all Bogdan, 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 like <laughs> Bogdan, Bohad, Bolad, Bojan, <laughs> Baloney. Um, yeah. it, it yeah. is a wild time over there. Yeah. Um. Sure. Trade him. <laughs> we gotta wait send, till next year now but yeah send them to minnesota we'll give you Please. a dollar yeah um just God, send them damn. anywhere that's not racist let them let, let them breathe let them walk the streets without fear that a mormon's gonna hand them a bible you know <laughs> that's right um what is he gonna do without all the festivities of salt lake though um, yeah, I good for him, I guess. Get out of there. Let's see what they do with just go bear. <laughs> get a taste of your Please, own medicine. Yeah. See what you got. Yeah. Um, God, what a terrible take. Um, as Jokic is like, send him here. We would be so happy to have him. <laughs> like he's like, <laughs> God, I I'll take anybody. <laughs> yeah. Even though he doesn't want to go to Denver either in your <laughs> astute observation. We're sending him to Toronto. <laughs> Perfect. They treated Kawhi so nicely up there. Yeah, true. And he loved it. Loved it. Loved it. It was a good time. Long time. Um, let's talk about NBA since we are here, Jake. And it, yeah. we are headed down the home stretch of the season. Uh, things are really heating up. It's actually kind of interesting. At this point now, Final Four is over. This is the point where you can start paying attention to the NBA. I've been doing it for you all season long. You're welcome. This yeah. is when it gets good. This is when NHL is really good now. Uh, playoff hockey is essentially here. All the, these sports that you don't care about, they're now good. Uh, we left off with the 76ers winning, uh, beating the Lakers and the Clippers. Uh, they played the Suns last Sunday. The game wasn't done while we were doing our show. Suns ended up winning. They then beat the Warriors. Warriors right now, I'm not sure if you heard, Steph Curry was ruled out for the season, Yeah, which is... Major blow, but good thing, Jake, they qualified for the playoffs very early for us. So uh, they didn't even need to worry about it. They were still playing pretty good, though, actually. But obviously, no Should have rested him. That's what I was saying. Like, they locked up the playoffs in November, November 7th. That's insane. Like, why, why were we doing this? This is insane. But whatever. I will say, this is sad. I really thought the playoffs were going to go them Nets showdown I thought that's where that was heading so um that I'm telling someone's cursed Clay Thompson and Steph Curry are not allowed to share the floor together ever again it's probably Kevin Durant's curse or something that he put on the team true like if I had to guess it's Draymond's fault it usually is <laughs> <laughs> I think it is my only reasoning um yeah, I, I don't know. Um, Steve Kerr's curse. You, like, you can't be on them and the Bulls. You know, you only get so <laughs> right, much. Yeah. You know? Um, so I don't know. I That sucks. Um, so with that, I mean, is this a good point? Because I know you're going to give us our lowdown on, like, where we stand with, you know, our tallies that we've been keeping track of. But can we talk about, like, what's the narrative now? Like, where's this going? We think playoff wise. 
the West, I guess East and West are interesting for different reasons. The West, though, right now the Lakers aren't even in the playing games. They've actually fallen out. LeBron's not playing today either because he turned yeah. his ankle or something. Anthony Davis comes back today. So I think we should just assume the Lakers get in the play-in game. And by the way, Jake, you're a longtime Timberwolves fan and Twins fan. So I think this you're probably the best person to ask. If the Lakers get in that 10th spot for the play-in game, they're going to play the Timberwolves, and they're going to beat the Timberwolves, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. <laughs> that I mean, sucks. it is what it is. Oh. Uh, well, maybe not, because we've been talking about all Stop. year. They will. Stop. They will. It's but, the Lakers versus the Timberwolves. They're going to win. But we have the defensive player of the year now. Who? Oh, Beverly. <laughs> I was trying to think of who it was. <laughs> Beat oh, that. Cat? I love doesn't Pat matter. Bev. Put anyone out there. He's on a lockdown. Um, <laughs> Pat Bev. What's um? Pee -pee. Yeah, that's a first round loss. I so I was gonna ask. Never mind. That's the storyline. Because I was gonna ask, like, is the rest of our casual fans as excited about the Timberwolves as I am? But the answer is no. But I they're on most such a roll. Surprised. They're good. Dude. They're two games behind the Nuggets right now <laughs> for the playing game. But the Nuggets play the Lakers today without LeBron, so they should win. They're currently yeah. trailing by four, and yeah. the Nuggets have a really easy last four games. They play the Lakers twice in that. So, yeah. asshole cat is my favorite player. Carl Anthony Towns has become a dick over the last month, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's the Beverly effect, man. Like it's <laughs> it's real. It's so good. Um, um, in the in West. The East, oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry, the only thing I was going to say is, like, now I think the two storylines I'm most interested in, I'm just gauging, is, like, I guess whatever the Lakers do. But I was more so thinking is, can Jokic, like, haul them all the way in and whatever the hell happens with the Jazz? Right now? Oh, no. Um, right now it would be Nuggets versus Mavericks, which is – no, Nuggets versus Warriors. Okay. So I think Nuggets could win. Jamal Murray still isn't back. He got injured last yeah. year towards the end. Um, it would be Jazz versus Mavericks. Those are like the prototypical West matchups we always see, I feel like. Yeah. Um the team I'm interested in, Suns have been coasting all year long and have been really good. They're the have the best record. The Grizzlies are phenomenal. So is 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 Ja gonna be back? Yeah. He should be. And by the way, I should do this really quick. The Grizzlies beat the Suns. Uh, they scored 122 points without John Moran, so they're the current NBA champions. Good point. Way to sneak that in there. Good call. Yeah, a lot of people didn't see that. By the without, way, they put up 150-something points. Or no, 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 it was a different team. It was the Clippers who did that. <laughs> they're all the same. They're Dance all the same. Man. Uh, yeah. Dance man, man. Um, the East, I think the Nets have the best betting odds to win the East, and they're currently the 10th seed, so which is hilarious, and the, I don't disagree with it. The Nets, yeah, wow. I see this will show you. I, first of all, I am that person you were talking to, and it's like time to pay attention to the NBA. I'm like, got it, I'm in, <laughs> but. I can't believe they're the 10th seed based on, like, all the talking stuff. But, yeah, that's fair. I mean, Kyrie can play now. Um, mm -hmm. They should. I mean, they can the, pretty easily leapfrog up to eight. But it, that doesn't really matter. It doesn't mean anything. The Hollywood narrative, right, is them versus Sixers. Yeah. Yeah. Sixers are fourth right now. The Bucks are really good. Celtics, really Celtics, by the way, Celtics were one of the worst teams in the league for a stretch. They're the number no, they, two seed in the East now. They can't lose. They're on such a fucking streak right now. It's unbelievable. And they're going to lose immediately. Yeah, I know. They're going to play the Nets probably in the first round, and they're going to lose. That's a bad matchup for them. Yeah, because, like, they're, they'd go against the other team that, like, has two stars who can't miss right now. Tatum's a fucking beast, though. But um, yeah, really good. good. I wish their town liked black people more but other than that i mean what a team man um, i mean that's a big ask jake like what are we <laughs> it's true yeah that's right i you know i don't ask a fish to fly i don't ask boston to be nice to people of color um hey bostonians listen to the show fucking prove me wrong man <laughs> send in your hate mail
Just send Mayo to Hannah Bruner about how you're nice to people who aren't white. Huh? Prove it. Hey, we had Cam Newton as a quarterback for one year and complained about it the whole time. <laughs> I was going to say he treated him super nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, so happy we got weird, Mac though. Jones. Yeah, the East is East is weird. Um, the Heat are weird. They're the one seed that no one believes in. No. <laughs> Mostly because Kyle Lowry's on the so many players like they they're five and five over their last 10 games and they're the number one seed it makes no I, sense they only have 50 wins i just thought of all right i'll give you the finals i want the most right after i give you the finals i want the least ready for this finals i want okay. the least heat and suns <laughs> yeah no one wants that uh it's terrible right i just want to make sure we're on the same page that's a god i don't want that oofta that's yeah, that's it's like last year, except for take away the best basketball player in the world, which is Giannis. So, like, okay, now it's worse. Yeah. And then um, I can't tell who I want to win the West. Like, um, I think I want the Grizzlies. I was going to say, and if it's going to be the Grizzlies, then I want it to be because I'm just dream booking, right? I want the Grizzlies to win. So, let's say Grizzlies Nets. Like give would give big. give them the biggest like giant to slay you can. That would be cool. Um or F it. Give the Jazz a finals collapse. Have them lose <laughs> have them lose to the Bucks. Put the Bucks down three games again and have them beat the Jazz. I'm fine with it. I'm very happy with it. I want them to lose on a Rudy Gobert missed free throw or something. Yeah. That's my dream. That's, that would be good. That's a very achievable dream. I thought so. Uh, let's talk about MVP, Jake. MVP. We left off with Devin Booker scoring 49 points. Yes. Uh, he has he's been balling ever since Chris Paul came back. He's just been in score only mode, essentially. Should we uh, give all there. of his MVPs to Chris Paul? We could. We could, <laughs> but I, that would ensure that he doesn't win because Chris Paul doesn't <laughs> win a single thing. So that's true. That's I, true. I actually, I just talked about this. Uh, I recorded, if we were watching on YouTube, we did a Packers mock draft. There's an offensive tackle named Chris Paul. And I said, if we want someone who's going to be in the conversation for winning, but never do it, we can draft him. <laughs> like that could be very good. Sim. Yeah. The line God. He's also kind of a vigilante. He will hurt the other team's <laughs> players on purpose. So it's kind of so great. It's just Chris Paul. Okay. I think so. Just dressed up. Um, but we have Devin Booker coming off a 49-point performance. He faced the 76ers, and uh, he scored 35 points, which is good. But he was only 6 of 8 from free throw, Jake. And Oof. Joel Embiid, 37 points. So, what? sorry. Sorry about it. Make your free throws, and maybe, maybe you could be an MVP. <laughs> Not today. Wait, Joel Embiid wait, gets it. Can we get a T-shirt that just says, make your free throws? I feel like yeah. that's our catchphrase. Yeah, that's kind of the it's kind of the theme of season four, Jake. Make your free throws. Yeah. Okay. Then the 76ers face the Nets, Jake. I don't know what's going on here. I have, oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. 76ers faced the the Bucks. I thought James Harden was on the Nets for a second. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> Whoa. Um, so they faced the Bucks. Joel Embiid scored 29 points. Very good game. James Harden did edge him out, though. And, though, and uh, that's kind of Wisconsin. I said, though, really hard. Oh, uh, <laughs> but James Harden scored 32 points, beat him out. Unfortunately for them, Giannis scored 40 points. Giannis takes back the MVP. Congratulations to him. It's been a long time coming. Uh, he deserves it. He deserves it. Next game, the Bucks did play the Nets Ooh. in. That was a very, very good game. Very good game. Uh, as people who watched it remembered, Middleton tried to hurt Bruce Brown, got thrown out of the game, at which point the Bucks played better because Middleton's a bum who is fucking terrible at basketball. Uh, Giannis hit a three to force overtime, and uh, Nets did a balanced approach, but Giannis scored 44 points and took home another MVP award. So congratulations to him. Can but he's tired, a, Jake. 
He is tired. Yeah. But I just want to take a quick moment to point out, I do love, I feel like our theme for NBA talk today is we hate your favorite player. I feel I, I, I just had a thought. I'm like, I hope someone's listening who just loves Gobert, Chris Paul, or Middleton. Ugh. And we're just like, if you your are- favorite player is a bum. Your if your favorite player is any of those people, stop watching basketball. Good God. Oh, I love Rudy Gobert. Says no one ever, dude. Now, go, there's, go what, ugh. there's a teacher. The your one. favorite player sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of my attitude in sports yeah. media, actually. That, that is, is good. good. Uh, Giannis was tired after that overtime victory, though, carrying the team. So he was out next game. It was a back-to-back. They played the Clippers. Uh, Clippers were also without Paul George, who just came back. Uh, they were without uh, Reggie Jackson as well. So Reggie Jackson probably thought, oh, we're tanking. Like, if I'm not playing, then obviously we're not good. <laughs> the Clippers put up over 150 points on the Bucks, And uh, Robert Covington exploded for 43 points. He hit 11 of 18 from three-point range. But, Jake, more importantly, two of two from free throw. Dude, make your free throws. That's all That's all you need to do. So It's the little things. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, no one's role free players throws. explode like the Clippers, man. That's a good point. That is a good point. <laughs> they got to figure out how yeah. to get those guys more consistent. And there is very few players more like Terrence Mann out there than – uh, Robert Cummington, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Roko is just Terrence Mann, except for a little bit more confidence. Yeah. That's about a little it. bit. Just a little bit. I mean, Terrence Mann just needs to believe in himself a little bit more. I think yeah, Reggie they're... Jackson's kind of putting him down too much. And they're both just Karan Butler, right? Every... <laughs> I just always think of whatever yeah. I think of Terrence Mann, I think of Karan Butler. Pretty much. But that's NBA. Any other NBA things you want to touch on before we move on to the NFL? Uh, Where's our playoffs sit at? Ours or the NBA? We're Um, just going to do a flashback on the last 10 games, right? Yeah. So each team has approximately four games left of their season. um, And we will pick whoever has the best at that point. So if we did it for right now, Jake, for the West – it would be the Pelicans, I believe, at seven and three. They're currently the nine seed in the playoffs. So they would have, uh, if we're going just by the normal West standings, they would have leapfrogged the Clippers. But obviously, yeah. um, they have a chance to get in no matter what, anyways, because of the playing game. And for the East, the team would be the Raptors are already in, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were put in last time over the Bucks. Sorry about it. Um, it would be the Hawks at seven and three, Not and the bad. Hawks are currently the eight seed. So we're on track. I'm sorry, we're on track. I apologize. Did I come up with a model that hit bullseye right away? Uh, uh, oops, my bad. <laughs> if it hits, it's it hits. What this is what we should do really quick. Grizzlies are currently the NBA champions, so if they win out, obviously they head in to the playoffs with the record. Yeah. But if they lose, I'm just trying to find a scenario that's scary and not good. So they play the Jazz, who are in the playoffs. They play the Nuggets, who are in the playoffs. Then they Uh play the Pelicans, which could be scary. But the Pelicans are in the play-in game, so if they lose, then we're okay anyway. Yeah. And then they play the Celtics. So I think we're fine. I think we're good. We made it. Champagne! We did it, boys. (laughs) I feel like the Jazz are going to be the team to screw it up, though. So if they lose to the Jazz, the Jazz then play the Thunder. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, there it is, Zach. Oh, my God. That's so predictive. Oh, I dropped my mic. I got so scared. <laughs> it is scary. <laughs> the Thunder is going to screw it for us, damn it. Oh, no. I'm excited for it. This next week of basketball is a good one, Jake. Uh, oh. But let's head into the NFL. Kind of a mixture between an NFL and a WWE segment. Everyone right. around the everyone around the interwebs this week and I guess on TV too. Um people have been doing the quarterback rankings. And uh oh. I've seen a lot of interesting ones. I've saw some 
that I agreed with, which was interesting. There are some people who left Patrick Mahomes out of their top five. And I'm like, huh, good for you. I think you're learning something. That's very good. Um, and they had Joe Burrow at number two. And I agree with that, too. So congratulations to you. You know football. Okay. But, Jake, we're not doing that. Why are we no. going to – like, what's the point? Let's just add to the conversation. Hey, Jake, actually, before we do this, should we talk an hour about Will Smith and Chris Rock? Like, that that's not us. We're not doing that. So instead, we are going to pick uh, and label, I guess, the top heels and faces at the quarterback position in the NFL. We will sort them and kind of then, I think, say who the top ones are, right? Let's do it. That is a good way to do it, Zach. I'm excited. Um, besides, if we just did top five, I mean, it'd just be Justin Herbert's name five times, right? Yeah, he's a top five quarterback in every <laughs> way for everything, of course. Of course. <laughs> um, a lot of Justin Herbert's in their people's top fives this week, too, Jake. Per, top five at what? Because he can, stupid. he's barely top five in his own division. Okay. So, do you want to switch off like we did yes or last week with yeah teams? i think that's the fun way to do it right yeah so let's go with a layup right away jake i'm gonna put tom brady in the heel i think that is safe to say right he just got bruce arians to retire that's right tom brady's a heel because he won't quit damn it <laughs> Payne manning yeah. sent him a gift basket <laughs> are you gonna he send him back. back brady you better at least refund him yeah um, I will dick. pick a face. <laughs> what a dick, dude. Um, <laughs> easy face pick. I'm going to go with the most obvious to me. Um, the little engine that could Davis Mills get in the yeah. baby face category. My dude, <laughs> anyone who comes after Deshaun Watson's a baby face. Congrats. Yeah, I'll just add on to that. I'll just say Deshaun Watson heel. <laughs> i think you could say criminal i think you could say terrible person we'll just say heel so yeah also that's a, you know what more do we need to say about tom brady other than the fact that he went on the board before Deshaun watson hey and i think that's right by the way yeah for sure um i'm gonna stick with the pick of like i just think if a quarterback's not necessarily in a good team or good position they're probably gonna be a baby face most likely there's a few exceptions but um our boy the pipes the pipes are calling danny boy daniel jones he's a baby face i agree with that i don't think there's his career man come on everyone's shitting on the poor guy the poor lanky bastard there's nobody, including Giants fans, I think, that are like, oh, Daniel Jones. No one's put their fist in the air while saying his name. Dude, for whatever reason, poor lanky bastard made me think of all dirty bastards. And I just want to call Daniel Jones uh, PLB. <laughs> there we go. He's got his nickname for the season. Yeah. Um, I'll get the bad guys out of the way early since we're yeah, switching off. That's what we're doing. Th- yeah. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, heel. I think that's... He's got to be for sure. Anyone who's not us, yeah. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Packer fans. That is correct. Um, I'm going to go with... I wonder if you're going to... Oh, no, I'll go a more obvious one. Uh, Baby face, new team, new face, same likable guy. Matt Ryan, baby face. He was a heel for us for a little bit. Oh, for a long time, his entire career. Yeah. But last year, baby, he almost cut off his finger that one time. He's Captain No Shucks. He's got to be a baby face <laughs> now. That's very true. That's a good point. Um. Okay, now it gets interesting. I think. Oh yeah. Um, I would say Patrick Mahomes is a heel. Agree. Do you have any disagreements? You agree? No. Have you met his brother? Yeah. He's, he's, That's my biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. He's a heel. His team's really good. Um, and he any any guy who doesn't have to try to be good is a like they always talk about his no look passes like that's a cool thing. Now nah, that's a dick move, dude. Other people have to aim. <laughs> Screw you, <Yeah>. bud. <laughs> um right. Yeah, plus he's been too good for too long. Um this is a boring one, but I'm trying to get the boring ones out of the way so we can get to the real interesting one. So I'm going to put Ryan Tannehill as a baby face. Yeah. Mr. Lunchpail guy. Yeah. He is Matt Ryan, who's a little faster. You know, that's about it. 
Hand it off and nod, boy. Hand it off and nod. Right. Uh, I'm going to go with a face. All right. And I think this is someone who was a heel at one point, but had a massive face turn uh, when he was eating W's and posting workout videos. Jameis Winston's a face, right? Yeah. Yep. That's a good one. That is good. Um, I'll go another like boring one that I don't think we're gonna like talk about a lot. Uh, I don't think it's controversial. Like, f- prove it, dude. Heel, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> he, no, you, he for sure is. Yeah, you're too mediocre, and and you wanted to hire a bodyguard to protect you from COVID. You're <laughs> you're a heel. Right. That his whole COVID stance, people. Yeah, just missed Rogers. it because they wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah they wanted to be mad at Rogers, but Cousins was more vocal. <laughs> And he did the if I die, I die thing. Like, there's a lot of stuff. Bad. Yeah, yeah. he's a year. Um, Matthew Stafford, face, right? Even though he's a Super Bowl champ. Oh, he was on the fence for me because I thought th- he's a face right now. So he should be on the list. But I'm predicting he turns healed this year. I, he, he is for sure in a position to do so. I want him to show up super entitled <laughs> now that he's yeah. won everything. He doesn't care anymore. Um, yeah. uh, I'm going to go <laughs> heel Trevor Lawrence. I think pretty, I agree. Yeah. Pretty boy. Uh, you know, the next, the chosen one. I think he's a heel. Yeah. He's, he for sure hasn't done anything to show he's a face, I guess. Yeah. And as um, soon as he's good, we hate him. Right. Like, <laughs> like the yes. only thing that turns him baby face is if he's terrible. Correct. That is yeah. correct. Uh, he could cut a promo against Urban Meyer and go face. That That's fair. Say. That's fair. Um, Cam Newton, I think, is a heel. He can't be anymore, right? He can't be anymore. He went home. But he he's still he wants to play this year again <laughs> for somebody else. That's fair. All right, put him on the heel. I mean, that's where he'd want to be, is heel. For sure. So yeah. I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, baby face, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. Because um, he's like the captain of the underdog Eagles. No one knows what the hell they're doing there. And he has never – no one from his organization, his fan base really has been like, yep. He's a quarterback. Like, still no one thinks he's a quarterback, no, much less sucks. a future quarterback. Oh, you know? That sucks for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would go – I mean, Justin Herbert's a face. Yes. Even yeah. though we, you hate him. I hate him. <laughs> I like Justin Herbert, but – He's boy. a face. Just yeah, overrated. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Heel, Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I have – I did 32 quarterbacks, so I didn't include Panthers quarterback unless you include Cam Newton. I have both Browns guys because you can't not have both of them on here. Yeah. I have no Seahawks guy, you know. Good um, call. There's a few interesting ones. I, trying to get away from my own biases, I think Kyler Murray's a heel. Am I wrong? Uh, he's a heel because of the whole, uh, like, leading the league and, like, um, roughing the passer, like, demanding money, possibly sitting out. Like, yeah, he's a Del- heel now. Deleting all of his pictures from his team until his coach gets money. And then yeah, all of a sudden, he's now a he's heel. fine. I will say that you thought he was a heel before he was, but, like, you're right yeah. now. Yeah. Imagine um, also trying to avoid my own biases. Um, uh, oh, shit. Do I pick an easy one or do I go out on a limb? Okay. Josh Allen, I think, is a baby face. I think so, too. After, I think like, so, too. Yeah, he's the lovable loser. Like, he can't quite get it done. Buffalo is easy to root for. He might not yeah. win that division this year. <laughs> yeah, their, their run is done, which is awesome. They, they are the favorites to win the Super Bowl still. And I'm like, huh, okay, <laughs> whatever. 
Who's it picking um, Boomer? Is it them and the <laughs> them and the Niners every year? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I don't think there's any easy ones left, personally. So I'm interested to hear what you say. Yeah. If we have to put this person in one of the two categories, I think Trubisky is a face. Oh God. My own I was hoping we would just agree to be biased and bury him. <laughs> um, but you're right. You're right. To the national media, they probably want him to do good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I mean, that's the right answer. Good for you for being the bigger man. Um <laughs> I mean, we could put him in yell. I don't care. <laughs> I don't um, think Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, Derek Carr's a face. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he like so. Yeah, he almost uh, you know baby faced his team out of like the worst <laughs> spiral ever last year out of sheer moxie. That is a good point. That is a good point. Yeah, Mariota's a face. He's done nothing ever to be <laughs> heel. No, he's you a know? big baby face. Um. Let's get spicy. Um, let's put Joe Burrow as a heel. Because he, he has to be. <laughs> Dude, he's Rick flaring us. He's showing up to things in turtlenecks with gold chains. He's like calling yeah. them the team of the future. Yeah, he's a heel. He has to be. Um, I will go. There's some easy ones I... left, I think. I'm trying to separate personal bias because I'm not sure. I think Russell Wilson's a face, but I'm not 100% uh, sure. He is now. I, I'm a, I, right now, like he's going to Denver. Um, I don't think you get buried for wanting out of Pete Carroll. You know what I'm okay. saying? Like if he, if he demanded to get out of another team, but I, you know, running away from Pete Carroll seems like a sensible thing to do. <laughs> My humble opinion. Um, <laughs> um, two is a face, right? I don't know. I'm, I honestly, both, I'm not sure. We can't keep bullying for two. I think I think two is a face. I think he. De- I think he deserves to be bullied. I really do. <laughs> You're. This is bias. This is the O line thing coming back. No, <laughs> dude. Fuck him, man. Fuck you and take my law. I don't think I, I mean, can do it. Okay, I will let you put him as a heel if you let me put uh, – who who can I really – Who are you going to argue for out of these? Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. If you can let me put Mac Jones as a heel too. I think he probably is. All right, I'll do that. I'll double him up. Okay. okay. That's fine. Who is the bigger heel? Probably the biggest. <laughs> uh, uh, while we're there, Dak Prescott's a heel. I was I don't know because playing for the Cowboys immediately makes you a heel. Agreed. But he is such a good guy and only says the right things. I I think I agree with you. But he like a it's a really just... good guy, he'd play for another team. <laughs> okay, fair enough. There you go. Fuck you, Dak. What's your deal, dude? Okay. Are you uh, also are Jerry some... Jones's kid? Come on. What are we <laughs> what are we doing? I might I might try to get some money out of it. Uh <laughs> Jimmy G. I think he's a heel. Ooh. He's too handsome to be a baby face, isn't he? Well, that and he did like the whole dating the porn star thing, and then <laughs> he's he said some stuff. Uh it's he yeah. has, the only thing that makes me go babyface is the whole, like, his team not wanting him thing. But watch him go to a scummy team. So, yeah, I, I'm cool with him being a heel. Yeah, we don't need even, I guess, I should say. No, let's not make it even. I'm not trying to. Um, we're just getting real close. Um, Zach Wilson's a face. You can't suck that bad and be heel, right? I don't, <laughs> I don't think you play for the Jets. I, I sympathize you. Remember his mom's shit, though? Dude, his mom's a heel. <laughs> okay. But, we can separate them? We did yeah. separate Mahomes. But, yeah, okay. No, but that's different, dude. He's a stain. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, that's a very good point. Don't put my logic up against me. You play for the Jets. I, You know, 
If okay. the Jets are good, okay. then I'll put him as a heel. <laughs> but until then, maybe. <laughs> well, Mike White's well, a Jets... heel, so, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Mike White is definitely a heel. Do you think, over the next 10 years, do you think the Jets have a winning record ever again? The next 10 years? Yep, Jesus one season Christ. and winning record. Yes, just based on the odds. I don't think they have that talent on them currently. I just think... You know, you, you look at any terrible team in the NFL now, they had a winning record within the last 10 years. We'll check back in 10 years, Jake. I, I don't We'll see. I, I don't think they'll ever have a winning record again. I ever. mean, just look at the, you know, I don't know. Just look at the terrible, terrible teams from last year. They all had a winning record six years ago. Even the Jags, you know. Did the like Jets? a 10-year stretch is just a little... The Jets had one in within ten years. Yeah, the weird Mark Sanchez years. Yeah, it was that close. was longer. That was longer ago, buddy. No way. They had a winning record in that span of time, didn't they? I don't know. We're gonna find out right now. I okay. honestly am not sure. I think they did. They did. Twenty thirteen, okay, so fourteen. He, just twenty fifteen, and that was Todd Bowles. First year. It was the Ryan oh. Fitzpatrick year. So told Ryan me. Fitzpatrick saved him. <laughs> yeah, you told me. You, As he always right. does. Um, um, <laughs> but yeah, so their last this is where they've been, starting from last year going backwards. Four and thirteen, two and fourteen, seven and nine, four and twelve, five and eleven, five and eleven, ten and six, thanks to Fitz. Yeah, how about that? That was pretty good. Um, four and twelve, eight and eight, six and ten, eight and eight, and then eleven and five. Well, they'll get another one when they sign Fitz again. True. That could, in a few years they'll get Fitz again. Yeah, it comes back around. It's like Haley's comment. Yeah, it's true. Um. Okay. Okay, Jake. We got four it's left. We have Lamar Jackson, Carson Wentz, Justin Fields, Jared Goff. Justin Fields is interesting to me because he is an Ohio State guy, and I can't tell if and that's my bias or not. Yeah. Um. I think he's probably a baby face. I think so too. I think, think of how much he got think, sacked last year. <laughs> yeah, I think at the start of last year you could argue, but I yeah. think Nagy turned him face. And he's so athletic and stuff. Yeah, and his team sucks. Um, I mean, does that mean does that mean you think Lamar Jackson's a face? I do think Lamar Jackson's a face. I because I'm trying to separate him from his coach. Um, I like I like John Harbaugh a lot. He's one of my favorite. Yeah, coaches. you also like Tom Izzo. Okay, <laughs> come on, man. Um, what are you trying to say about Tom Izzo, dude? Is, is Harbaugh is is Harbaugh a heel? Yeah, dude, for sure. The whole our whole audience just went yes. Harbaugh's a dick. Jim Jim Harbaugh is, and John's his brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so bring family back into it. Okay, no, my just bad. brothers, just brothers. <laughs> oh, okay, um, dude, I'm not consistent. I'm just right. Um, I, <laughs> Fair enough. It's my heel turn. Um, uh, yeah, dude. I mean, Harbaugh. Yeah, you know, like I think we forget the Flacco days where he was just a gas bag. You know, where everyone's he where he was just like. We have the best defense. No one trusts our quarterback. Blah, 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 blah. He's the worst, man. I read the wrong. <laughs> Dude, you don't have to be wrong to be a heel. In fact, most know-it-alls are heels. Take that, Sam from second grade. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, we just unlocked something, people. Jake is spiraling. <laughs> We got baby. two left. Carson Wentz, Jared Goff. Jared Goff is a heel, and I'll tell you why. Oh, okay. Tell me why, Zach. Have you seen the bullshit Dan Campbell, the biggest baby face in the entire NFL, has had to put up with? Like, if you have to put them up against each other, uh, just being around Dan Campbell has made Jared Goff the most hated person, possibly on the planet, but for sure in the NFL. I think that's fair. Can I also lay out my argument for why Carson Wentz is a heel? Sure. It's a simple argument. Do we want to see them win? <laughs> or do we want That's to see point. the commanders implode? That's a good point. I honestly, 
you tell me if I'm wrong. At least, and this isn't right, at least 80% of my commander's hate is because of the name. Should have been the Commodores. Ever it's just I... a bad name. It's it's a, the whole Guardians thing coming back around. <laughs> it's <laughs> us being picky about new names. Um, I out. do not, I, I don't dislike the new name. I think it's fine. Um, mostly because I'm going to refer to them as the commies, <laughs> which yeah. I just th- think is funny. Um, shouldn't have picked the communists as your mascot. What am I saying? Um, so I don't know. I do think it's dumb. Like they should have picked something else. I, I wish they would have picked something politics related. Yeah. The Supremes. <laughs> it's really funny. That would be good. <laughs> be, yeah. <laughs> dumb. Um, but yeah, we actually ended up splitting this even for the people yeah. at home. So our heels are Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, uh, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, Trevor Lawrence, Cam Newton, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, Tua Tagovailoa, Mac <laughs> Jones, Dak Prescott, Jimmy G, Jared Goff, and Carson Wentz. The That's faces right. uh, are Davis Mills, Daniel Jones, Matt Ryan, which I – and. Ryan Tannehill. I think those four are the same person. I, I want to throw <laughs> that out there. Yeah, just uh, different ages. Yeah. Yeah. Jameis Winston, Matthew Stafford, Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, Josh Allen, Mitch Trubisky, Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota, Russell Wilson, Zach Wilson, uh, Justin Fields, and Lamar Jackson. So it's right. I'm not going to lie. Out The one that sticks out to me is I do feel like Mitch Trubisky is going to be an asshole at that Christmas party, but whatever. Whatever. You invite those people in the room, and I think they went, how did Mitch? <laughs> Do you think invited? Mitch has – Mitch is going to have the thickest Yinzer accent week one. Oh. Like he's, it's just going to be so fake, just terrible. Pull a full Brian Kelly. Um, yeah. Family. Family. You're right that he should be a face, but um, I'm just biased. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's a few that are on the border that can easily flip. To your point, I think – and I hope, I hope we see a Matthew Stafford uh, heel, heel turn. I think that's fair. Um, there's some guys who could become baby faces if they go the right way. Like you said, Trevor Lawrence, maybe. Trevor um, Lawrence, maybe. Um, Dak Prescott, if he leaves Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it, I feel like. Yeah. Not Tua, man. Not Dude, Tua. give Tua a chance. Um, I've given maybe... him enough chances. <laughs> That's fair. Maybe Mac Jones. Um... That's interesting because he talks a lot of shit in Alabama, so like that's why he's heel. But it's also kind of tough to be a face as the quarterback for the Patriots, I think. Yes. Even though we love Belichick, they're still heels. Agree. The best dude, he's <laughs> awesome. I'm so excited. And there's no offense or defensive coordinator for the Patriots this year, which is unbelievable. I love the Patriots so much. If it's not the Packers who win, I'm cheering for the Patriots. Are year. they not going to fill those? No, Dick. Isn't that he's good? Dick. It's awesome. And and by the way, Joe Judge, who we thought was coming on to be the offensive coordinator, he's offensive something, which again makes no sense because he was the special teams coordinator for the Patriots. Uh, Matt Patricia is an offensive advisor or something, which again makes no sense because he was a defensive coordinator for the Patriots. <laughs> like they're everyone's skill- out of position. It's they're awesome. skill building. They're skill building. Um, that's very <laughs> yeah. funny. Um, Bill just doesn't want to make new friends. No. No, he's done with it. Yeah. Everyone keeps saying uh, my coaching tree sucks, and I agree. <laughs> so now it's a tree of one. <laughs> That's right. We'll be our own tree, damn it. Um, any other NFL things you want to talk about before we end on a historical hysterical? No, I'm so excited for this sec. Okay, let's hear it, Jake. All right. So it's baseball time, Zach. We might talk more baseball next week because mm-hmm. – April 7th, opening day. Big day. First day to catch baseball. Not the last. 
<laughs> we'll be here a while. But Unfortunately. Yeah, if you missed day one, I've got good news. Um, there are other opportunities. But opening day, I will say, credit to baseball, I think their opening day feels special somehow. For a season that's so long, I actually think it's the, the opening day I look forward to most besides football. Do we know who's throwing out the first pitch yet? Of which game? Like the, do they do it simultaneously? Like who's the first pitch? Oh, dude, every game has a first pitch. I know, but like the first one of the fucking season, isn't that special? Or do they not make it special? Because if so, I might be done with fantasy baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate the sport so much. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who the first first pitch is. Every fucking last year was Fauci, has... and he fucking blew it, dude. He made me well, think COVID was fake by how terrible his pitch was. I guarantee you Biden will throw one out, and his will not be Can pretty. He? We'll find out together. Has anyone used, like, a pitching machine before? Like no. A jugs machine. What I want Biden to try and do is the Simone Biles do a flip and then throw it. Just give it your all, Joe. Um, you know, uh, yes, I do love a terrible first pitch, so I hope that happens. But Zach, a treat for you. Mm. I have your new favorite baseball player. Are you ready? Yes, I'm very ready. All right. For those of you who have not heard this game before, historical hystericals, I'm going to take Zach on a little trip through memory lane. I'm going to ask him some questions. We're going to get a little silly, um, because history is fucking hilarious if you know where to look. So, Zach, there are 314 no-hitters in MLB history. That is a game uh, where a pitcher, they can walk people, there can be errors, they can hit a guy, um, but they don't give up any hits. Um, They could even walk in runs, um, which the Twins did one year. They lost a no-hitter. Go Twins. (laughs) Uh, uh, In that vein, Zach, I've picked the story – of the best no-hitter of all time, subjectively speaking, belonging to a guy named Doc Ellis. Have you ever heard of Doc Ellis, Zach? Yeah, I heard the name. All right, probably because of his no-hitter. So we're going to start there because some people listening will know where I'm going with that. So to save suspense, he's known for his no-hitter, but this guy, Zach, what a legend. So Doc Ellis' no-hitter is legendary for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And I need you to tell me why multiple joy sack was it a, because he did so well. High as a kite. Is it B because he did so though being unable to see out of one of his eyes or is it C he did so while having explosive diarrhea in between innings. <laughs> um, I do love a good poop joke, Jake. Uh, we all- I will go with that then. Uh, he, he, it was, a. Uh... Uh, quite an explosive game for him. No, he was on a date, Zach, with Lucy in the sky with diamonds. He was on <laughs> LSD um, when he oh, pitched really? his no-hitter. Oh, yeah. He was not just high. He was tripping balls. So our boy was on yeah. LSD, uh, later reported that he had been partying for 24 to 36 hours beforehand. Um, <laughs> so much so that the reason why he was so um, – so high on LSD was because he had actually partied so long that he didn't realize that he was pitching that day because his uh, fiance at the time told him like, what are you doing still high? And he's like, well, I don't pitch until tomorrow. And she's like, no, tomorrow is today. (laughs) So he (laughs) partied so hard. He didn't know what day it is. He flew from Los Angeles to San Diego to pitch. Um, he, during that game, is on record of saying he had no idea who he was pitching to the entire time. <laughs> he walked a bunch of people. He hit a couple. But they won. He got a no-hitter. Um, and just in case you thought it was a fluke sack, um, he uh, has said that he has never played a game fully sober in his career. So yeah. this is the beginning of the story for Doc Ellis, not the end of it. But – um, yes, he only could recognize if a guy was right or left-handed, had no idea who he was facing. He said all for all he knew, he was striking uh, Babe Ruth up there. So good for him, you know, way to go. Yeah. Um, so on that note, Zach, 
not only did he like his drugs, his his teammates, by the way, were surprised he was on LSD because usually he had other drugs of choice. So they were like, well, we knew you were drunk, but not that you were on LSD. So, you know, just got to keep the guys guessing. So, Zach, why did he miss a game later that season? This is another multiple choice for you. Was it A, he was so drunk he went to the wrong town on accident? Was it B, he was so drunk he got maced by his own team security guard? Or was it C, he was so drunk he couldn't remember how to pitch? I'm going to go with the wrong city. That is very funny, Zach. But no, instead... Ah. I know it sucks. He was so drunk that the security guard didn't recognize him. He didn't have any ID oh, on him. He tried to prove who he was by presenting his World Series ring, Zach. And instead of being like, "Oh yeah, I guess you're on the team," maced him right in the face. Um, the security guard. The security later... guard. Oh, for sure, for sure. He was yeah. with other players too. Um, so on What's, the secu- this guard had a, an agenda here. This didn't just happen. Uh, Believe it or not, Zach, uh, Doc Ellis later accused the guard of being racist (laughs) because Ah, he was threatened by three black dudes in the parking lot um, and kind of went for uh, the nuclear option. Um, So, yes. Or I like the idea that he just hated him, you know? Yeah. Maybe he bet against him earlier or whatever. But, yeah, for his troubles, he got maced in the eye. I also – what a flex is it to just show your World Series ring? Right. <laughs> it's identification. Um, by the way, I don't think Tom Brady's carried an ID in, like, 10 years, right? He probably no, just shows off no those way. bad boys. Yeah. Um, so, oh, that's Doc Ellis Sack. So, he's you know, he likes to party. He's a little bit of a party animal. But also, Zach, he was good at pitching. Maybe a little too good. Uh, Because he was suspected of using a spitball from time to time, doctoring his pitches by spitting on it to get extra grip. Uh, The league started to crack down on him a bit. So in a short answer question, Zach, open-ended, when uh, he was almost caught, what creative solution do you think old Doc Ellis came up with instead to get a better grip on the ball? Um, I would assume has something has to be some bodily secretion. You are correct. So, you are um, correct. There's there, we have a few choices. Sweat is not funny. It's not that he was sweating. So it's not that. Uh, we we could talk about pee, jizz, or poop. Uh, I'm gonna go with <laughs> every sex ed uh, teacher's starting monologue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna be a teacher. Uh, I'm gonna go with pee. <laughs> I think that's easier to work up to here. Well, Zach, I I regret to inform you that in this case, sweat was funny. Because Uh, I I apologize. Apology for cutting you down there. (laughs) No, Uh, because Zach, just working up a sweat wouldn't have been funny. But how he did it, he wore hot hair curlers to the mound the whole game so that he got a very sweaty head. So he just wore hair curlers in the whole time. And he kept going to adjust them, you know? And by the way... Was that not suspicious? Uh, He was only allowed to do it one game. And (laughs) uh, believe it or not, when someone tried to call him out on it, uh, he went back to an old favorite. Not saying it was wrong, but this is... It's just what he did, and he's done it before. Um, Racist. Racist, Zach. (laughs) Yeah, of course. Yeah, his hairstyle, which is fair, um, you know, he needed to use hair curlers for that day and that day only. Um, in yep. a very hot Pittsburgh. So that said, uh, hair curlers to the mound one time. Uh, yeah, sweated up the ball. It didn't work. So then after all of that, um, he got really pissed at the Cincinnati Reds one day. Another short answer question for you, Zach. If you were a pitcher, and this is where I think you're gonna, you have to love Doc Ellis, dude. What did he do to get back at the Cincinnati Reds for being really good? That's why they pissed him off is because they were really good. Okay, so pitcher, he has to throw something at something in my mind. Uh Um, I know nothing about the Cincinnati Reds or their ballpark if there's something uh, historical there. I'm going to go with he threw the ball at... Is it illegal or is it just going to be rude? I'm going to go with like a third base coach or something. Is it illegal or just rude? 
You know what, Zach? I'm going to give it to you because let's say you're a pitcher, Zach, and you were mad at a team. How many guys would you have to throw at to be satisfied? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, at least three, I would say. Zach, you're not a quitter. Neither is Doc Ellis. The answer, all of them. He, he tried to hit every yeah. batter that came up. He got through five before they pulled him out. He hit the first three dudes. It took him six pitches to do so because, again, not sober. So he's trying to hit a moving target. Um, he missed batter number four, um, so walked in a run. And then on batter number five, he sneaked two 98 miles an hour fastballs right behind his head before they pulled him out. So Christ. that's right. So everybody is there. <laughs> you want some? Come get some, baby. Um, so, but I like the commitment. Racist. He's like, yeah, racist. Uh, how long are you going to pull it out? Um, I, I will say if there's a swerve in the racism story coming at the end, um, a positive twist, actually. Um, so, Zach, believe it or not, after all of this, the Pirates decided to trade him. <laughs> they were like, we, we've had enough. Um, even though he was really good, he went to the Yankees uh, shortly after, traded again, couldn't keep old Doc Ellis tied down. So when he went to Oakland, Zach, they decided to have him keep pitching charts uh, when they weren't using him uh, to kind of keep him in line, give him something else to do. So, Zach, a choose-your-own-adventure here. How do you think he responded? It's multiple choice with three very different outcomes, I would say. Uh, only one is true. How did he respond, Zach? He surprisingly excelled at keeping the charts and became their pitching coach at the end of the season. He, uh -huh. me he messed up the numbers on purpose to make his competition look less consistent than himself. Or he destroyed the charts. Um, let's go with destroying the charts. Ding, 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 Zach. <laughs> You're all right. Our boy's not a quitter. Um, no, no, no. Doc Ellis called this the self-proclaimed craziest thing he ever did in his career. While keeping track of the charts in the clubhouse, he set all of them on fire. Um, <laughs> setting off sprinklers in the clubhouse. Um, saying that, well, he regrets it. It was a very funny moment because everyone had to exit the building uh, and everyone just apparently went, oh, Doc. <laughs> so <laughs> old Doc got him again. So, Zach, that is the crazy life and times. Those are all the questions I have for you about Doc Ellis. But I will say, after he retired, this was the swerve I was talking about, I think a positive ending to historical hysterical, Zach, he really turned it around. Like, actually, like this part's not a joke. Doc Ellis became a drug counselor. He got clean, became a drug counselor for like 20 years. Um, also spoke out against racism in the league. Some of those things we talked about. Some of those perhaps more legitimate than others. But yeah. there were some proven cases. He was, for example, um, the hair thing coming back. Well, the hair curlers were suspected cheating. Um they did not call him up to the major leagues until he agreed to get a haircut because they deemed his hair at the time unprofessional, um, mm -hmm. even though he had like a jerry curl. So that, yes, racism. Um, he was called like Native American slurs in high school. So he spoke out against those things. Um, also was an advocate for um, sickle cell anemia, which he was diagnosed with at 17, and liver cirrhosis, which unfortunately he actually passed away from in 2007. So old Doc Ellis went out a hero, dude, after hitting everyone on the Reds, which I will say is maybe <laughs> my favorite part of that, and doing much more than I could have on LSD. Same. Same. Uh, good for him. It does sound like probably one of the baseball's biggest stars, in my eyes at least. I think so. And by the way, like, it's hilarious because if you look up quotes from him, because of course, they're like, what do you think about your career? He's like, don't remember it. <laughs> He's like, right, what, a, yeah. what a time. But yeah, um, all of that happened in not a very long span of time because very good, very good, very, very drunk. So did not make it a super long time. But yeah, our boy, the LSD king, went on to be a drug counselor. How can you not love Doc Ellisak? What a, what a story. What a ride. Almost makes me love baseball. But unfortunately, he no longer plays. And that's kind of the issue with baseball. There's no stars. Uh, so I'll have to go back and watch highlights. But yeah. that's about it. I also it, looked up if he was related to Monte Ellis, former NBA player. 
He is not. But I did find out, Jake, Monte Ellis is an avid fisherman, according to his <laughs> Wikipedia article, in case anyone would like to know that. I And I also don't believe it. That does not seem correct. Oh, you come know. on. I believe it. You can't just make stuff up on Wikipedia. Good point. There is a link, so maybe I should click the link to see the picture of his fish. I can only imagine is what this is. <laughs> uh, 11 facts about Monte Ellis from NBA.com is the article that it brought me to. Uh, to Some video. poor journalism Antico. major <laughs> writing up that <laughs> article. God. No kidding. Have a, yeah, have a little thought on that. Zach. I like your historical hysterical segment, Jake. I think that it, it's always a crowd pleaser when we can find gold with a story like that. Yeah. And I will say, I must be doing something right with my college students because one of them sent that to me and was like, oh. please talk about this on the show. This guy was on LSD when he threw a no-hitter. Uh, by the way, anyone who wants to do work for us, by all yeah. means, send it to <laughs> Hannah Bruner at Elk Mount Schools. <laughs> or tweet at us. At Jacob Osmond one on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Or, and only Jacob Osmond one on Twitter. Yeah. Maybe also Zach, you know, if you want to. Um, I guess. If you want same. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to restart that account one of these days. Um, I need to so that Pete can get big, you know. I don't <laughs> think he's going to control it. Him. He can be <laughs> your manager, social media manager. Yeah, that's fair. Zach, how are we feeling? Are we feeling like that's good there? Do we want to talk anything else? Um, Is there anything you want to talk about from night one of WrestleMania before we go? Yeah. All right, fans. If you're not a wrestling fan, see you. See you later. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> Let's do a little, a little plug before you go. If you like this, listen to other Flurry Sports podcasts. Go listen to the Playing Catch-Up podcast on Spotify where you can hear my dad yell at me about Ichiro Suzuki. Um, <laughs> go listen to Zach on uh, talk about the Packers on the Lombardi sweep. Uh, I keep calling it the Lambo sweep as a joke, and so i got to make sure I say the right name when I'm advertising <laughs> the Lombardi sweep. Go listen to Inside the USFL, a, a podcast which I love with Jordan McRae. Um it's going really good. You can also see that on YouTube. Give our YouTube videos a like and a share. That's always helpful. Um, but thank you for listening and watching. Uh, any other companies you want to plug? Anything else, Zach, before we do a little wrestling talk? Any other companies I'd like to plug? Um, well, I don't know. Maybe someone who's sponsoring us. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I, I should be doing it. Go to betus.com and use the there promo code <laughs> FLURRY. Question if that doesn't mark. work, try, if that doesn't <laughs> no work, try Flurry Sports. But I think it's yeah. Flurry. Uh, um, and you can get like 250% on your deposit, I think. Bet some shit. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk plug. about betting stuff. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, flurrysports.org slash masterclass. I do want to record a masterclass sponsor for us or ad for us soon. There's some really good classes coming up on there. Like legitimately ridiculous. They, they're really, really cool. There's one, there's a class taught by multiple former presidents about leadership. And regardless of your political affiliation, that's insane. That's, that's really good. cool. That's really good. So listen to that. Look those up. It helps the show. It helps the brand. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, in the meantime, it's WrestleMania, baby. What a show, yeah. Zach. It was good. So I will say... I was nervous because I thought this was going to have the Zach Bruner curse because you watched it and the rumble was not very good. <laughs> rumble was fine. Hey, why not? Um. Okay, so I don't know how into it we want to go because I don't know who's listening to this anymore. So I'll just talk about the things I want to talk about. Um, overall, because I think we've – I watch a lot of wrestling and you're more of a casual fan, so I'm interested in our different opinion. Um. I don't get why WWE doesn't book things right because <laughs> the <laughs> show was good, and then like the like card didn't necessarily make sense in parts. And this, which I'm not new at saying this, so I really want to hear your opinion. As someone who doesn't watch it, did you need all those effing video packages? No, no. <laughs> good. Just double um, checking. That was really weird to me. There's a lot. The one video package. 
that makes sense, but I've also seen it too many times already was the uh, Seth Rollins one. Like it makes sense to include that again, but yeah. to your point before, or maybe it was just in your raw article on flurry sports.org plug. Yeah. Um, plug. Read my shit. Everyone who wants to have seen that or needs to have seen that saw it on social media and then they did it on Raw and then they've done it everywhere else since. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, this is a thing that I, I won't spend much time on because it's not the right place to talk about. Um, WWE and AEW, they don't know how to use social media because they think fans watch everything social media wise and they don't. But we watch your shows. So you don't have to do recaps and stuff like WWE is obsessed with. But at the same time, Cody Rhodes cut an awesome promo on social media that not a lot of people will see because it's on mm -hmm. just social media. But then again, mm -hmm. if you make it the crux of a story like the Seth Rollins thing, don't do it a bunch of times. Like the Seth Rollins thing, the whole point of it was go watch social media. So if you're going to do it, right. just leave it there. <laughs> don't then make me watch it on raw and on WrestleMania um, to get it. And half of the promos were for stuff tomorrow tonight. So I'm going to see them again. True. Yeah. Um, and who's watching night one, who was on the fence about night two. So I, I, I don't know. That stuff didn't make right, night, sense to night me. Night two is the one everyone was going to watch. Yeah. And, so that doesn't make sense to me. Also, the only thing card placement wise is, with all those videos, they cut a match, right? There was a match that they didn't do for time. And yeah. they had Gable Stevenson come out and wave at the crowd. Cut that, that was for time. Stupid. That um, was pointless. I will say, I have this is so I wanted to ask you about him. Um, does it not seem like right now his his character is gonna be I don't care? Because <laughs> he didn't seem very enthused. And I would love it. Get like this Hulk of a human who's really good at wrestling to come out and just be like, this is too easy. That's a right. fun character. I don't think that's what they're going for. I think he was probably no. just actually bored. Are they going to try to make him like a mixture between Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar, you think? Yeah. A freak. But I hope they do more so with Brock Lesnar of, and Kurt Angle got there eventually, but I hope they're okay with him being heel. My my yeah. fear is that they're going to try and go John Cena and just be like, look at this guy. He's the face of the company. He's so good. And just expect you to cheer him. And no one does that. No one cheers the teacher's pet. It, so. It's just so good. It's so easy, but so good to do the Olympian thing. I'm better than you. And just yeah. ride that. Right. And like Chad Gable, who is also an Olympian, he just doesn't look as freakishly athletic as Angle or especially Stevenson. But like they finally got around to that. And with him, his character is also that he got a four point out. So they're literally like really playing into like, I'm smarter than you, I'm more athletic. Yeah. Like, so that stuff just works, you know? Um, the only thing with Stevenson, he can be a baby face if he just throws people all the time, but you don't need to tell us he's good. Like, just let him be a freak, you know? Um, right yeah so yeah also i've seen the guy actually wrestle and do like talk interviews he should be a heel he's so cocky he's, yeah. he should definitely be a heel so um that was one um other things on the show um i have a quick question about him yeah anything you want to talk about yeah go for it because he's obviously just going to come in and be a massive star and that's why they did that last night for someone like that, does he have to start in, on NXT shows, do you think? He will not. Um, so that is the question for him is because whether he should or not is a good question. I don't know. But he won't because um, that his whole booking has been weird. A year ago now, they drafted him on Raw. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, in yeah, their yeah. draft, it doesn't make sense. But, yeah, they drafted him like third – and they keep this. I've heard that criticism is this feels like the fifth time they've announced Gable Steves. Um, yeah. And I don't know if he'll show up tomorrow on Raw. I don't know if he's ready to wrestle yet or not. Like this might have just been another like coming soon. Like the prevailing thought is that his first match will be at SummerSlam. Ah, uh, okay. So this is tomorrow, still early. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow would be tough because I would assume tomorrow is a big Cody Rhodes show. Uh, and a bunch of NXT call-ups from the sounds of it. 
So, sure. um, and like maybe some of like maybe Shane, maybe that kind of thing. Yes. Like they like to make the raw after many a big deal. So maybe signing back some of the guys they already released um, back. There's talk yeah. of some of those. I will say on the Cody Rhodes thing, as someone in your case who doesn't watch other wrestling stuff really, and not that you're not knowledgeable on it, but like you don't watch it every week. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I thought to give WWE credit that was smart for something that everyone knew was going to happen, they this is why I think they did the Stevenson thing. So I I don't agree with what they're doing with Gable Stevenson, but they had at my last count five names that could have been Seth's opponent, even though everyone knew it was Cody. Cody like put something out that was like, who knows? I might have cold feet. Like they were like, Cody might not turn up. Who knows? And then they announced Shane might be there. So everyone was yeah. like, oh my God, is it just going to be Shane McMahon? Undertaker at his Hall of Fame, they had him say, never say never. Awesome. So everyone, yep. So everyone was like, is it him? Um, and Gable Stevenson saying one of the announcers said, I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the last time we see him this weekend. And they had him come mm -hmm. out before the Seth Rollins thing. So I think that's why that was there as a red herring. And Bray Wyatt, who got released from the company, they had him tweet out that he was in Dallas this weekend. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Good. So there were like five people who like legitimately tried to get you to think. And RVD, like someone, RVD tweeted something <laughs> too. Um, and Seth tweeted at a bunch of guys that it could be. Notably, he didn't tweet at Cody. So that was probably the giveaway. But um, I thought that was good. And so, I, you know, they tried. And that, even though I knew it was him, they waited a, an obnoxiously long amount of time for his music to hit, um, yeah. which was good. And that was a – the thing I've heard on the internet is that that was a weird moment, which I get, because he came out in – and you asked this question yesterday, full AEW stuff. That's his AEW gear, his AEW entrance, his AEW theme, and his AEW nickname and neck tattoo. So um, – <laughs> yeah. Um, that was so, distracting, by the way. I didn't like. Oh, it. for sure. And that's <laughs> been the consensus. They made it his stupid AR thing too. Was a giant neck tattoo. Uh, that is my least favorite part of all WWE pay per views I've seen. By the way, it's the no worst. one likes them. No one likes them. They're so bad. The the graphics, dude. Um, but they yeah, cut so away from stuff to show them. Like, so go back bad. to the guy. And it's Cody fucking Rhodes. It's such a big deal. So, um, yeah. It's really good. I think what everyone's talking about. So what did you think? Is someone, that's what I'm curious about. Is someone who like isn't as like hooked to wrestling, what did you think of that match? Um, I really liked it, honestly. I thought it was really good. Um, mm -hmm. Again, this is the first time I've ever seen Cody Rhodes wrestle. <laughs> Fair. So we that's what I was wondering, it. right. Um, so like I knew who he was. I obviously know his dad. So like yeah. I thought – you know, we've been talking about like WWE really likes to do the surprise, not so really surprise things at WrestleMania. <laughs> they love it. They I love think it. this makes sense. Yes. Yeah. I think it actually made sense. And I like, you said he cut a promo on Twitter or something. I haven't seen that. Yeah. But I like the thought of him appearing, you know, Big Pop wrestles, does the ode to his dad, obviously in the middle there yeah. or to win, yeah. uh, which was big. And then he wins, and then he's gone, and he doesn't talk. I like that because then, obviously, on Raw tomorrow, he's going to be talking finally. Um, yes. So I I think the way he shows up, doesn't talk, doesn't introduce, it's just him in the ring. It's that stare down thing. It's Seth, you know, talking to him during the entire match, essentially. I think the way they actually did it was super, super good. I like it, too. I really, I really like it. To the point where I was confused why they did because his interview backstage is really good, but I'm like, it was in fact so good that I was like, are they just going to show that on Raw? Because that's not what I want. You know, I oh, don't yeah. want I didn't you to see it. I, I wish they didn't do that then. That's what I'm afraid of. Is If it's its own thing and it's just something you can go look up, cool. Because it was really good. But like, he said a, why he was there. Like, he said a lot of the stuff that I'm expecting him to say tomorrow. Um so I think it's good. I think um, what I'm most interested on is his character in AEW was I escaped WWE. 
So I don't know what his character is going to be. It, obviously, the match last night, it was an ode to his dad. Like, that's what it felt right. like, was it was like they made a big deal with that on commentary. commentary. They were like, Seth Rollins was a pupil. Like, this is his moment. So I – and, like, in the little backstage thing, they didn't do too much. It was like a four-minute thing. But, like, he was like – um, he talked about his dad a lot. So I wonder if, like, this whole thing coming back is going to be, like, getting the title for his dad. Like, it's interesting. I just – I'm just like, what's his character? Like, I don't – um, I could see him being like, I am wrestling royalty, essentially. Like, yeah. WWE is here because of my family. And just kind of writing that, like, I'm better than you because of my family. I think that'll be good. The one thing also, uh, one of the reports on why he left was because he really wanted to be a baby face. So, um I wonder if he'll do that right away and like just chase the gold and like I'm a big deal and I'm here to like, you know, I left and I proved myself and now I'm back. Um, also, uh, I really hope they don't do the Voldemort thing with AEW. I hope he's allowed to talk about it. That's my worry is <laughs> that he's going to be like, I've been gone, but now I'm back. And then they're never going to mention it. They, again. Did, they did that last night. The commentators like he's traveled the world. Like, OK, yeah. like where was he? Even if he says indies, it's fine. But, like, there's a line between – like, Seth Rollins, and part of that was playing into this match, I'm sure. But earlier this week, they asked him about AEW, like, trash-talking WWE because Punk does it all the time. Um, yeah. And um, Cody does it – did it a lot. And he was like, I think it's trashy. Like, I, he's like, there's a lot of people doing really good work over there, but if you keep talking about us all the time, it makes us look like the big deal. Um but some of that was a shot at Cody because that's like he was the one who was doing it. Like he was the one who was like yeah. Triple H sucks and all that. So I hope he talks about it. So that's – and he doesn't have to talk about it a lot, but just be like, I started AEW. Here's why I'm not there anymore. Um, but that was cool. That's like a once-in-a-lifetime moment. We'll see how it goes. Um, wrestling fans are weird, and I think it's like 50-50, like excited he's back. And the other, honestly, are hoping for him not to do well. Because he left the promised land. So, yeah. Well, I, I heard someone on YouTube today be like, I, I just feel betrayed. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, that means it's working, first of all. Right. And two, like, let the man do what he wants. Like, <laughs> like he, they gave him a buttload of cash and it's his dad's company. So, let him go back yeah. there. So, um, <laughs> I was like, whatever, man. He doesn't owe you shit. Uh, the let's i don't know how much more wrestling we want to talk about so i definitely want to talk about this one and we could talk about other stuff if you want to dude stone cold wrestling again the best right the best his crowd work beforehand <laughs> just his stares so fucking funny <laughs> so, um oh, by the way when he forgets or not forgets but when he can't think of another insult he always lands on you dumb son of a bitch. And it works yes. every time. It's so good. As soon as he started going into it, like, you stupid air, beady <laughs> eyes. I'm like, yes. Like, this is what we're here for. This is all I need. Just do yeah. this for 30 minutes, please. <laughs> um, That was good. I knew the four-wheeler was coming out because I saw a picture of yeah. backstage. So, like, going back, which is, that's hilarious. It's still such a good moment. So, right, it gave us I, the best WrestleMania moment of all time. Yes, yes. Stone Cold and Kevin Owens <laughs> riding up the ramp together. It's <laughs> so good. With, with Kevin Owens in the metaphorical bicycle basket. Like, he's yes. got his arm wrapped around him, driving him up the ramp. It's so good. Screaming. Like, yeah. helpless screaming. Like, I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah. I was... Obviously, Stone Cold not moving as well as he used to. Yeah. Um, also, I got sad watching him chug beer at one point because he couldn't <laughs> get any more down. And you could tell he was just feeling so heavy. Like, <laughs> after the match, adrenaline kicked in and he downed about 10 more beers. But at one point, I'm like, he can't swallow another fucking gulp of beer. <laughs> um, I forgot I was... how much beer he drinks during matches and shit. He, he drank, drank so many. He drank four during the match. Yeah. Awesome. I was terrified 
when they were scared. in the crowd and he got su flexed yeah. on that floor. I was legit the way the ref jumped down there to see if he's okay. I was God. legitimately terrified. Well, because they faked like he was going to do one, and I'm like, oh, that's still going to hurt. And then he took it. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God, Steve, you're crazy. Um, it did, though, Stone Cold. And good for him because he agreed to do this thing in Dallas. He made a big deal in the promo beforehand that that was where his first match was, apparently. So he obviously thought this was a big enough deal to do it. I just thought the whole thing was fun. Small criticism. You can tell he really likes suplexes. They did a lot of suplexes. He, I think he hit four of those motherfuckers. I think he hit a there's lot like, of suplexes. There's certain movements he can and cannot do, and that was one of them that he could do. Yeah. Big swing and punches still there. His clothesline's still good. Clothesline was good. The kicks in the corner, a little slower than they used to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um he couldn't twist on that knee very much, so he had to be calculated mm -hmm. in those kicks. That At first, I'm like, oh, no, is this the whole match is going to be this? It's going to be kicks and punches on the ground. I uh, thought the match was going to be three minutes long, by the way. I thought it was literally going to be corner, stomps, stunner, see yeah. ya. So did I. The, yeah, they started moving around the arena, which is awesome. Really um, good. I mean, just the crowd was like, oh, my God, Stone Cold's right there. That was wild. It was yeah. so fun. I don't I, I don't know how people – that was not some people's cup of tea, and I just – it was mine. So, you know. There was some really good wrestling in the match – or in the night, and once you get to that, obviously that wasn't premier wrestling. So, like, yeah. I could see that. But I just feel like the nitpicks I heard is should it be the main event or not? And should Stone Cold have won or not? Slash had another match. Because I think there are people, I think the people who are mad that he won are also just slightly mad that his last match wasn't against The Rock. But I think sure. people also forget that he, like, didn't exit there the way he wanted to. Like, I think this was, like, truly on his terms. It looked like it was a yes. fucking blast. <laughs> um, I'm sure he got paid well, he a ton of money. Yeah, he talked about it in multiple places, just basically like he wants to, you know, leave on his terms before it was medical reasons. And he just wants to, yeah, yeah, do it one more time. And he, and he, he did felt his thing. It, yeah. Honestly, it felt like he was embarrassed by the way he left wrestling before. And right. Doing and, this isn't that way. And he went out on his shield the last time, you know. And yeah. It's just that Rock had to go to Hollywood, which didn't work out, you know? And I think he regrets that, too, that, like, the guy he put over. That's not Rock's fault, but, like, he also ended up leaving Correct. not long after. But um, to that point, yeah, he was in – the last time he was in Texas at a Mania Wrestling, he turned heel. <laughs> they mentioned that yeah. at one point. So, like, he was a baby face. Um, he was never – I get it, right? Owens is still wrestling. Um, I think Owens is a bigger deal now than he was before the match because he just main evented against Stone Cold. Um, the only criticism I'll listen to that is valid, but again, I, I think it's smaller than what it, it accomplished. I think WWE continues to go back to giving yeah. old wrestlers the spot instead of trying to build up new people, and they did yes. it again, you know? I hope they do, like, in the track record, it says they won't. But, like, now do something with Owens. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I like that. Um, also, Austin's never coming back to lose. <laughs> right? Like, no, that's not no. – that's never happening. Also, I yeah, that I totally agree with. Like, that's a broader criticism. But also, I think that speaks to – I just don't think you can put Stone Cold in the same category as anybody else. No, he's the most popular wrestler Ever. of all time, possibly. Yeah. I mean, you could argue Hulk Hogan and The Rock, but just in terms of in terms he's, of dollars, he's, he's certainly the most, the most. He's the most important wrestler of all time because of what he did in the late '90s for WWF. You know, Imp important and profitable. Like he's still the number one selling wrestler <laughs> for shit. Right. So I think that was huge. Kevin Owens can still be a dick from this, even though he got beat up. Yes. So like. That's his whole shtick. He'll be fine. Um, I heard someone say that they thought this could have opened the show. There's no chance. No way. I mean, 
you would have had to cut some who's stuff. Gonna, who's going to get a bigger pop in Texas than Stone Cold? You can't no. start on the top. You can't do that. No, and especially what, what's he going to do? Drink half the amount of beer and not spill any? Because yeah. that ruined the ring too. You know what I mean? Also, here's the thing. Um, the, all that argument is saying is like, let's give the spotlight to someone else, which I get. But this is Kevin Owens' only main event ever so far. So he gets a spotlight. He gets arrested <laughs> for <laughs> yeah. losing to Stone Cold. With That's security and cowboy hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, the Texas Rangers come out to escort him out of the arena. Hilarious yeah. for being Canadian, yes. I assume. Um, that's great. Um, and who's closing the show? If he's on it, he's got to, and wrestling, he has to close the show. So, yeah. um, and oh, by the way, cause it's wrestling fans. If, if they, if he hadn't closed the show, we'd be talking about how he should have closed the show. So that's just <laughs> dumb talk. Um, cause the only other thing on the show, all that is, is just because people loved the Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch match. And they're like, they deserved that spotlight, which, sure, they did. And you yeah. can't put Stone Cold anywhere else on the card. Three nights. <laughs> should have had three nights. That's, That's it. That's done. the only solution. Yeah. What should um, be a throwback night? Yeah. I mean, listen, that match was really, really good. And it's just they wouldn't have got as big a reception if they had to go after Stone Cold. So. No. 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 They did it the way they had to do it. Um, Ronda Rousey apparently lost because she, the final thing that I want to talk about, just to get your opinions on this, the reports are out that um, she was pissed that she wasn't going to be the main event. And due to that, they're un, they she lost. They were planning on having her win the title, but because she was so pissed that she wasn't the main event, they're not sure how long she's going to stick around. Is this not her last fight on her contract as well, or no? Yeah, yeah. And so they beforehand they were going to have her win, and it was basically a done deal that she was going to resign. They but weren't then, worried about it. Okay. But she's like, "I'm not the main event," and they're like, "Well, we have Stone Cold <laughs> wrestling. Yeah. He's got a." Club. And then Ben said, "What? <laughs> what? You <laughs> what? ass? <laughs> what? <laughs> Stupid air." Um, <laughs> These insults are so second grade, too, but they're so good. Um, they always are, yeah. <laughs> um, Kevin Owens getting honestly offended halfway through was also great. Don't be like that, Steve. Don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. It was also good. But um, so she was pissed and so she lost um, because they don't think she'll be back. So that match kind of stunk, but like, what are you going to do? It seems like they didn't have a choice, but like, yeah. Like, in, in hindsight, I'm sure they the were the worst match of the night, right? Yes. Um, I mean, besides the two openers that didn't matter. Um, do you think do you think the Boogs uh, and Nakamura, whatever, yeah. uh, do you think they lost because of that injury? So hard to tell because it happened at a point where I can't I can't tell because um I'm, I, it could have gone either way because that match was honestly a toss-up because there's rumors that maybe they put it on because that they were warming up Boogs for a singles push. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, which stinks because he's sucks. out for a year. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, that really sucks. So, but Think there's rumors how good that Katari is going to get. <laughs> I know. I hope he can still come on TV, but he won't for a while at least, you know. So, um, well, he's rehabbing and getting surgery so um that sucks but yes they could have won because there were rumors that they wanted the usos to lose to like make it more tense for roman but um that's right. been a rumor for like the last 10 pay-per-views so um who, who knows but um yes is, is the short answer and also it came out that that was a spot that he was part of the reason why it was so weird um he was supposed to fake that injury and then it actually happened because he faked a knee injury on Friday to, like, win a match. Right. So they were going to have him do the same thing, and he actually tore it. So that's the reason why it got so weird and, like, hinky is because they thought he was going to spring back up and get back in, and then it was legit. That's wild. Yeah. He also that's legitimately not. squatted both of them on one leg then. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> shit. <laughs> Which that's is right. unbelievable. He's the best. He is so big. 
He is <laughs> fucking yeah. huge. Yeah. Uh, tearing out of that Mike's Hard Lemonade leotard that he was wearing. Um, <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, that stunk because of that. The next match was fun and fine. The Drew, Drew, Drew McIntyre is the fucking best, ain't he? He he was way more athletic than I thought, and yeah. by the, before he cut the ring ropes, like I thought about him, like what could happen? Like they should just do that, <laughs> and he did it. I'm like, oh my, god. that was one of the best moments of the night because that's fuck like the visual is awesome to see that. Yeah, well, it wasn't the best moment of the night because he's the best moment of the night, Zach Logan fucking Paul <laughs> making fun of Eddie Guerrero is um, the heel moment say- of the night. Let me say, though, and we talked about it a little bit. Logan Paul, obviously, unbelievably hated. I will never like Mm -hmm. him uh, for everything he stands for, everything he does. He he is the anti-me. I just dislike him. Yeah, He is so good at wrestling. (laughs) He is perfect for the WWE. Like he's sticking around. He's just a character. He should. Yeah, he said he's sticking around. And so, oh gosh. So it's a tale of two halves, right? Because we're in agreement. We talked about it before the show started. Um, they decided they're going to try and turn him babyface, <laughs> which, good luck, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not going to work. See, no, it does not seem like it's the move. Um, but, uh, you know, that's not going to work at all. But it's him the versus he, the Miz. They're both the worst. So I don't both I don't know what they're gonna the do. One there. came out with the most expensive Pokemon card around their neck, <laughs> and that's Logan Paul. <laughs> that's so that's the worst thing I can I will say about. one thing that no one's talked about. I would be down because they're both so good at it. I'm totally down if this feud is like a passing of the torch thing of mm-hmm. I'm the biggest dick. No, I'm the biggest dick. If it's just yeah. them being total assholes to each other. I'm so down. I hope they do that. Same. I hope, and I hope it's really cheesy. I hope Miz comes out and he's like, this town sucks. And Logan Paul comes out and he's like, you don't know the half of it. And then he cuts into the crowd too. I want it to be a heel off. That's fine. I'm in for it. That is um, have Logan Paul make fun of Miz's ugly baby. Like there's so many things you can do. Oh. Um, and his French wife, give, give him the all. Like that, that's good, you know? Um, but yeah, in this match, Bray Mysterio does a tribute to Eddie Guerrero, gets cut off by Logan Paul, who also does a tribute to Eddie Guerrero mockingly. And it's yeah. great. It's so good. His shimmy as he looked directly into the camera is like was maybe my favorite. I laughed out loud at it. And I literally out loud said, you fucker. Because I was just like, that's so good. Logan Paul always knows where his camera is at all points in time and in the rig, out of the rig. And again, I hate it, but it's so good for wrestling. Yeah, he's two flaws currently, two flaws, which he can work on. One, he, he went to the wrong corner a couple times <laughs> to tag in. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? do? He found it back. Um, two, he's got to work on his selling a little bit of big moves. Because yeah. he took the, the double 619 at the end of the match and then sprang back up like he was hit by a light breeze. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's got to work on that a little bit. And when the Miz turned on him, he's smiling into the camera as he gets hit with that move because he's having the time yeah. of his life. Like he prolonged right. the, he's like, oh, you're hugging me? Oh, it's a move. Like, it's like, Logan, Logan, take the take the move, dude. Look surprised. Do something. Don't smile right at me. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I didn't like it. I really wish I didn't like it, but he was great. Yeah, I don't know. I just else. can't believe that's that's the only criticism I have of that is I can't believe that they think he's going to be a face. And that's the only reason why they won is to make him a face, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's rumors of maybe having Ray and Dom turn on each other in the coming weeks too, like do a double thing from it. Dom be the bad guy because Dom right now is just Ray's kid. So there's rumors of having like a not a hard heel turn, but like a you need to prove yourself kind of thing. Um, I've never heard him talk. Is stuff. he good on the mic or no? He's fine. He's a little bland, but um, some of that is because he has to be really cheesy, like my daddy's boy kind of dude. So he's fine. Yeah. He's also people pointed that out. He's really good. He's been wrestling for a year now. So, oh, year and a half. Sure. He's been training before that, but, like, he's been wrestling in WWE for a year. So, he's grossly young, too. Yeah. So, um, and Ray is older than you think. So, um, 
Yeah. I think he's in his 50s. So, um, still waiting for that hot take, though. <laughs> he's always been waiting for that hot take. Um, <laughs> he's just, Zach sent me a text saying that I've only remember Rey Mysterio in tag team matches waiting to come in and hit his big moves. And it's true. I think it is, and he always still, does. He always comes in like a bat out of hell. There. Uh, I will say, though, to close on this before I ask you the, a question to end the show, uh, my, another thing that I think was my favorite all night, because I don't know if you caught it because it was such a small detail, the, the Becky Belair match was the best thing on the card, I think. Um, there's a few really good things, but that was my favorite thing on the card. Um, <laughs> Bianca Belair's pants said Becky's lips on it. Uh, as All a right. reference to Becky can kiss my ass. Yeah, but it said Becky's and then had like her lipstick tattoo like logo there. So it was super subtle, but I'm like, that's awesome. That's so that good. So it just said Becky's lips on her ass. Um, but that match was good. So my overall thing to you is, is night two going to be better than night one? I think so. I mean, Brock Roman is massive. Yeah. I feel like something wild is going to happen in the McAfee theory fight. That's why I think it's going to be better. And what the you, Edge AJ fight should be that really should be good. good. What do you think of Knoxville versus Sami Zayn? Because if anything be a, goes, so something stupid is going to happen. Night two on paper should be better, but that's why I asked because I just I on before the Rousey match I was like, and before the Rousey ending to be fair, because I've liked the match. I just don't get. Like, the booking was weird. Um, There's too many submissions for me. <laughs> wonder why. Cut it out. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, which is fair. But all, all I was going to say is I had no problems with the show. So I was just like, what are they going to yeah. do to top it? And I think there might be a little more filler tonight. And last night they hid the filler by having it just go first. <laughs> and cutting the other match that was going to be filler. So, um, and yeah. that's going to be tonight. They think because the match they cut, by the way, is the new day, and the whole point of the new day match is Big E broke his neck like not right. that long ago. So I don't know how you cut it, cut it like you have to have their moment, right? Where we get to be like, get well soon, you know? So it's like, I feel like right. they're gonna still be on it. So it might be bloated, but uh, Johnny Knoxville should be fun as hell, right? Where's the big hand coming in? He's gonna, Sami Zayn's yeah. gonna get. His shit rocked by a big hand. Um, I, I I don't know if I've ever said this to you because I know that you really like Jackass. It's too gross for me, so I'm a little nervous about the match because I can't handle poop and throw up. <laughs> so I'm nervous it that they're going to like... It can't be anything that leaves much behind in the ring, I would say. You know? No, but they could like lock him in a porta potty backstage. I don't want any yeah. like... Gross bodily functions, but I feel like that might happen. Um, that should be really funny. Um, I actually think the theory Pat match should be great. Um, I'm excited for Pat's intro because he's kind of teasing on we got some good stuff because obviously he doesn't have a real intro yet. Yes, it should be good. Here's the only thing I'll say. I think we – the show should already – if it's going to be great, it should already be good by the time it gets to Brock Roman because I think the one mistake people make with Brock matches is they are good, but they're not long. So they can't save a True. card because Brock doesn't wrestle 10-minute matches. He just, you know, he just doesn't. So it's going to be eight minutes of fucking great. It's going to be awesome. But, like, um, yeah. if the show's already good by then, then it has a chance to be better. But I just don't – I don't think that match will be better than Stone Cold. Nate? Probably. In terms of moments, probably not. Um, yeah. They're not going to hug each other on a dune buggy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they just won't. That's, that, um, that's the bar. Yeah. I and and I, I don't know. For me, I thought the best story going into the weekend was Bianca and Becky. So I don't know if there's a better one on this I will card say this. than that one. Is this going to be another raw dominated night? Because if it's more Pat on the mic, then I'm Could fine. Be better. Um. All right. The, you listed five big matches, so I'll go through those and we can end there. Um. Because it's Edge and Raw, or sorry, Edge and AJ. That's a raw match. Mm -hmm. It's um Knoxville and Zane, which is a SmackDown match. It's. 
theory and see this is what's going to get you because it's theory and pat but raw is going to help them commentate that right because pat's in the ring and then it's what's the other big one you said lashley um, that's a raw match um and I then think the smackdown take team is the sheamus one right and yes, okay? which maybe got moved tonight, but th- there's more Raw matches tonight because we didn't even – the Raw tag team matches tonight. Um, they were barely on last night. Like, it was just those Raw guys. Well, They're there's terrible, three hours man. of Raw and two hours of SmackDown, so there's just more SmackDown matches. They also opened with – it's hard to remember, but they opened with two SmackDown matches. Yeah. They were just quicker. Um And they cut a SmackDown match, you know. So I think last night was supposed to be the more SmackDown night. Um, and it's one raw main event and one SmackDown main event. So by the way, they made, you could tell usually they keep McAfee in the dark. So it's his genuine reactions. You could tell last night he was like scripted and it just wasn't as good. I think. Yeah. There were a couple times. His voice sounded weird. A couple times it went high pitch. It was just calm. I think the nerves might've got to him a little bit, but like, I thought he was high. <laughs> to be totally well, He was definitely high. He was definitely, he's always high. But well, that's fair. He, that's fair. To be fair, it's not like that's an odd thing. I just thought he was a little more zonked than normal a couple times. But yes, he was scripted a couple times. Um, I, I thought in the matches he was good. It was just like in the big moments and stuff that were a little like weird. Um, I thought he was weird in the Ronda Charlotte match. That was the one where, but I, I don't know if he was allowed to be super zany in that one because they were trying to make it a really big deal. Well, I, I just think, like, usually he's super zany and crazy when he's thinking on his feet and genuinely reacting. Yeah. And he knew where each spot was. So yeah. he's following the We'll book. see. I think he – I we've said, I don't know if – the thing that's going to suck is I don't know how much he's going to commentate tonight because he's wrestling. We'll see what he does with the Brock thing. That's the only thing I'm super – Because if he doesn't win, him. which I have no idea what they're going with the Vince stuff. <laughs> um Vince is screwing yeah. one of them over at least, but I don't know which one. Um, so because if he what loses, if, how does he come it. back out? Okay. Let's book it. Vince is gonna come in and screw over Pat. And then Shane is coming back and he's gonna beat the piss out of Vince. And then Pat's gonna <laughs> pin him and win. Um, yeah, I've I've seen it pitched that like they have theory loses part of a tough love thing because and that came out as part of the report, which I told you, which I can't quite believe, but, like, whatever. Vince is convinced that Theory is – and I think he could be a big star because he's so fucking douchey. But, like, um, he's such a pretty boy. But um, convinced that he has, like, Cena-level star power, which means yeah. they want to turn him face eventually. So if they do that, maybe they want to turn him against Vince. So maybe he sides with Pat. Um which would be weird here. But, like, you have yeah. to be careful because I, I don't – I've heard a lot of people say that Vince screws Pat. And then what? And then Pat just comes out the commentary with his tail between his legs? Like, that seems weird, you know? And then he mm-hmm. doesn't get fired? That seems weird, you know? Because um, I don't think they want Pat to turn into a wrestler. Probably. Agreed. So – I can't imagine with how well he's doing at commentating. Like, he's I, it's team. harder to replace. Yeah, you know? so um, so him getting screwed makes less sense to me just because I'm like, yeah, where does that go? You know, he's not going to get revenge. Yeah. Um, so I think Theory getting screwed. Also, they've hinted like Pat's going to get screwed, which makes me think that Vince is going to go, no, you, you, <laughs> you're my Huckleberry. And then he's just going to kick Theory in the nuts, to, you know, teach him a lesson. Oh, you gotta earn it in this business. You gotta grab the brass ring. <laughs> you know, so um it's <laughs> yeah. gonna get really old and really feisty. Yes. I can't wait for it. I we are talking about things everyone listening already knows though, Jake. So I think we should end oh, the shit. episode. Yeah, yeah, let's end there. <laughs> um yeah. Tell us how wrong we were. Thank you for listening. We'll we'll show you next week where we talk about WrestleMania two years ago. Keep talking about things you already know about. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, this was the Flory Sports Podcast. Make sure to send all of your five-star reviews to Hannah Bruner at Elk Mount School District, and we will be back next time. And Bye. Spotify.